Man, I'm all about, you know, building bridges and not barriers. God doesn't want to build barriers around his church. He wants to build bridges to the culture so the gospel can flood into it. Man, I'm all about, you know, building bridges and not barriers, you know. So I think a lot of times people will put you in a box and that box says, I don't want anybody not like me inside this box. Okay, brethren, so you may be asking me, what does Pope Francis have to do with Lecrae? What does Together 2016 and 2018 have to do with all of this? Well, if you've studied your Bible, if you've studied the book of Revelation, we can clearly see that Babylon, the whore, is a picture of the Roman Catholic Church. And we see that Pope Francis and many others are pushing for this ecumenical one world coming together, you could say. Now, 
this is happening within the Christian denominations and circles. And this is also happening with all the religions worldwide. And of course, as we know, or as we should know, this is preparing us for the coming of the Antichrist. So, we need to prepare ourselves and recognize those that are being used to bring forth this type of ecumenism, this type of coexisting, this type of tolerance, this type of one world religion, this type of a one world system, this type of a one world government, preparing us once again for what is coming. Now, my goal is to not go through all the fine details proving that the Roman Catholic Church is Babylon, or at least the religious arm of it, or proving that America could possibly be Babylon as well. But simply proving throughout this video that Lecrae, whether he knows it or not, is being positioned to bring as many people to the Antichrist as possible. And as we have already shown through the trailers leading up to this video, and as we will show today in this video, that Lecrae has been paving this way for several years, to say the least. He's a product of hip-hop, he says, and anybody who has studied hip-hop and the origins of hip-hop know that hip-hop is a religion. So, calling it CHH, or Christian hip-hop, or a Christian who makes hip-hop music is really no different than calling somebody a Christian Muslim or a Christian Buddhist or a Christian Hindu and so on and so forth. So I mention all this to really explore the musical aspect of Babylon and how music is used to form that bridge to and from Babylon with the Christian world to the secular world. You see, we look back in the book of Daniel in chapter 3. And when Nebuchadnezzar had this image made of himself, everyone was to fall down and worship it. And if they did not worship this image, then they would be tossed into the fiery furnace. But one thing I always found interesting about the image and about the worshiping of this image, it tells us in the scripture that people from all nations and languages were gathered together to worship this image. And it says in the scripture that 
at what time you hear the sound of the cornet and the flute and the harp and the sackbut and the psaltery and the dulcimer and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar, the king, had set up. And of course, those that do not fall down and worship this image, they will be cast into the burning fiery furnace. And it mentions in the scriptures several times, four times, that they are to at the sound of the music, fall down and worship this image. So we know through scripture that music is always used in worship. So I ask if the music that somebody is using is not worshiping the Lord then who is that music worshiping this is the question we must ask ourselves as we all have been inundated with music from the day we stepped out of our mother's womb friends We need to burn those bridges to Babylon. That's what we must do with these bridges is burn them. It is Hot 963 Indies number one station for the hip hop and R&B, your man B. Swift. And I'm here with a guy that I, I, I can actually say I love his music. I, look, and, and I say this because I'm not a big, great gospel fan. You feel me? And... You know, I'm part of the millennials, and sometimes you get tired of the choirs and and da, 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 you feel me. But your music is a lot different. I don't just get I'm going to church. You know what I mean? I get life with this music. Look, great, what's poppin'? What's happening, man? It's good. It's good to be here, man. man I'm glad you're here. I, I know. I want to say it was last year Halloween. You came to town, and it was yeah. sold out. I couldn't get in the show. Man, I apologize, man. Just that's just the Naptown love, man. It's just getting love out here, man. So I can't. I, I don't know what to say about it. Man, the city loves you. The world loves you because you're, you're something different. You know. Man, the city loves you. The world loves you because you're, you're something different. You know. Man, the city loves you. The world loves you because you're, you're something different you know i'm a hip-hop artist and so it's it's amazing to even be nominated in the gospel category because i'm a hip-hop artist but i can walk in both worlds and so to be able to walk in that world and and in, ignite and inspire sixty thousand young people um is a is a wonderful thing and then turn around and go do you know mtv the next day is crazy <laughs> that's pretty amazing that's wonderful I'm just excited to be here. I'm still a fan, you know. I'm, I'm still a fan. I'm still like a kid in a candy store. I'm like, man, look at this. This is crazy. It's your first time here at BET? The BET Awards. So, you know, it's, it's awesome to be here. And um, I'm really, I'm, you know, it's, uh, again, I'm a fan of all these artists. I can't wait to sit and watch and soak it in. Right. I definitely want to see Chris Tucker come back and do his thing. You know, he's always been funny. And, uh, you know, definitely I'm looking forward to seeing, you know, J. Cole. I'm looking forward to seeing uh, Justin Timberlake do his thing as well. And so, you know, it's, it's so much great music that's going to be displayed tonight. You actually listen to Justin Timberlake and J. Cole and all that stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. See, at the end of the day for me, it's about good music, you know, and so whether or not we're, we're talking about the same things or we're interested, you know, it's like a it's like a, a single person listening to a love song. It doesn't make you not like the love song anymore just because you don't have anybody. <laughs> do you, um, I mean, do you do you listen to a lot of secular music? Not like that. You know? See, this is getting kind of personal now. <laughs> nah, but, uh, but, but to be honest with you, not like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm. like in terms of in terms of enjoyment, not at all. Yeah. There's also a sense in which we believe that what we have to do to impact culture is not just become like the culture, but that we have to go into the most influential areas in the culture, master those most influential areas in the culture, be received and accepted in those most influential areas in the culture, so that then we can transform the culture. The classic example of this is the Christian musician 
who wants to go and do music so that through becoming the most popular music star of our day, he or she can then have a platform for the gospel. It's a classic bait and switch. I, I, I will be all that the world desires so that I can become incredibly popular in the world. And then once I am enthroned and the world is worshiping me, I will flip the script and tell them about Jesus. And of course, then the world will be saved. Is that what we see in the New Testament? Is that what we see from the Apostle Paul? I would argue that it is not. So I was gonna say, you know, how, how have things changed for you in the past year, but you can still answer that. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, obviously within the past year, um, you know, my fan base has grown, you know, I've gotten to do the BET, Hip Hop Wars, the Cypher, you know, gotten some good press, shout out to all hip hop, you know what I'm saying? And, uh... Now, it's been a little over a year since Gravity, Yeah. how has your career changed since that album released? You know, the most significant change has been that people return phone calls now. Wow. Check you that know out. who you are. Wow. Check nah. that out. It's love. Um. <laughs> man, look at all them names right there, man. You up there with Kid Cudi. You got guys like Rakim up there, uh, hip-hop legends in the game. You got Common. You got Danny Brown. You got E-40. You got Too Short. Uh, I mean, the list goes on. So how does it, not only, I want to ask you, how does it feel to be a part of something so big like this? You know what I'm saying? Like, how, yeah. how does that feel, man? And what can the fans expect from your set when you hit the stage? Oh, oh, you know, we we going in. We going in. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's the thing I love. Um, I, I think, man, it's, it's it's about creating music that the, that the people want to hear. And That's why, you know, people like Macklemore are winning because they making music for the people. You know what I'm saying? That's why, you know, people like Macklemore are winning because they making music for the people. You know what I'm saying? And not just trying to make cookie cutter stuff, but just being honest. The same sex. Have the characteristics, the right wing conservative stick it's a decision. And you can be cured with some treatment and religion. Man made rewiring of a predisposition, playing God. Ah, nah, here we go. America the brave still fears what we don't know. God loves all his children, is somehow forgotten. But we paraphrase a book written 3,500 years ago. I don't know. That's why, you know, people like Macklemore are winning because they making music for the people, you know what I'm saying? And that's why, you know, people like Macklemore are winning because they making music for the people, you know what I'm saying? And not just trying to make cookie cutter stuff, but just being honest. It's to me because, you know, that's always the biggest misconception when it comes to me. <clears throat> it's like, oh, are you gospel? And it's funny because I'm like, I grew up in hip hop. Like, I don't even know gospel, you know what I mean? And no, this, no shade or disrespect. Right. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. It's just, that's not my culture. That's not what I come from. You know, I'm a Christian who loves hip hop and I'm a mm -hmm. part of the hip hop culture and I mean Chance is a Christian who loves hip hop I think it's, it's the introduction it's how people come to experience you or what they hear about you mm -hmm. but when you meet me you'll learn really quick like this is who I am and what I'm you know interested in and who, who, who am I talking to on the phone who am I texting I'm not texting you know Donnie McClurkin I'm texting Killer Mike you yeah. know what I'm saying it's like this is my reality um, but you know my faith does, it doesn't change my genre, you know what I mean? It's my faith is my faith. Let me tell my beautiful, beautiful melanated people across the world, man. Hey man, nothing is going to come out of the sky to save you. If you are going to be saved, you are going to get off your ass and save yourself. I just argue with a damn street preacher like I did since I ain't been 16, 17 years old about him telling me having to need the original people. Um, Earth is only 10,000 years old, and somehow I'm going to hell. And I look around, because I'm in Southwest Atlanta, and I'm just looking at gentrification happening, the toys and turmoils of black people that are going through here. And I say, well, what God that claim they love us will put us through this? What God that claim they love us will promise a hell on the other side of that? Especially when at this point, we know biblical scholars can unequivocally tell you the Bible is not a historical fact. It is a group of myths and folklore and stuff to carry on the tradition of peoples based on the African spiritual system. So really, man, I love all my religious people. God bless y'all, but miss me with your God talk. You know, interested in and who, who, who am I talking to on the phone? Who am I texting? I'm not texting, 
you know, Donnie McClurkin, I'm texting Killer Mike. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's like this, you know, interested in and who 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 am I talking to on the phone? Who am I texting? I'm not texting, you know, Donnie McClurkin, I'm texting Killer Mike. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's like this. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Brethren, and anyone who watches this documentary, we see that Lecrae is loved by the world. We see that Lecrae loves the world. He admits it out of his own mouth. Brethren, as you will see while I'm reading these scriptures to you, that that is not what a born-again believer is supposed to be. Somebody who's yoked together with the world, yoked together with unbelievers. What fellowship do we have with darkness, friends? And we see in the scriptures, Jesus said, If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. Brethren, we are not going to be loved by the world. We're not going to be invited to the world stage. Unless one reason and one reason only. To corrupt us, to corrupt others. The word of God also says, brethren, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but it is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Yes, friends, we must do the will of the Lord. Hallelujah. Friends, the choice is easy. The choice is simple. I understand Lecrae says in his book, for all those who will ask, have you read his book? Have you read his book so you can understand why he's doing what he's doing? Well, to answer your question, Lecrae read his book to me. I listened to his audio book. And yes, I heard Lecrae's reason for doing what he's doing. But unfortunately, that's not biblical. Building bridges to Babylon is not biblical. Using Acts 17.28 to justify building bridges to Babylon is not biblical, friends. I say this out of love. I say this because I want to see Lecrae repent. I want to see him give his whole heart over to the Lord. Friends, the word of God tells us. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. 
that which is acceptable in the sight of the Lord. That was Romans 12, 2. The book of James, chapter 4, and verse 4. Brethren, it says, Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Look, we can preach to the world. We can share them the gospel. We can show them love. But that doesn't mean we yoke up with them. That doesn't mean we make music with them. See, the Word of God says that God is a spirit, and those that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. It's not the Holy Spirit to yoke up with the world and make a song with the world. And it's definitely not the truth either. Because if it's not the Holy Spirit, it can't be the truth. And if it's not the truth, it's definitely not the Holy Spirit. And when Lecrae makes a song with Ty Dolla Sign called Blessings, and Ty in the song is talking about, oh, how he's blessed that he has a girl, you know, etc. It's a lie because... Most of Ty Dolla Sign's other songs, he's talking about sleeping with other men's women. And he doesn't mind being the side dude. He doesn't mind having side chicks and this, that, and the other. But it's okay. It's okay to do a song with him and put on a front. Because we're trying to reach the culture. Trying to reach the culture with what? To bring them back to Babylon? To bring them back into bondage? Brethren, the scripture says, ye adulterers and adulteresses, why? Because you're committing spiritual adultery on the Lord with other gods. You're fornicating with the world. And we're to not love the world, brethren. He says, in the in first John three and verse thirteen. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hate you. Marvel not if the world hates you. See, the world is gonna hate you. They're not gonna love you. They're not gonna invite you to their stage. You know, the Word of God tells us in the book of Ephesians 5 and 11 to have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but to rather reprove them. And to reprove also means to expose, to make manifest, to bring to light. We're not to have fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Brethren, we're to walk in the light, it says in the scripture. Jesus said, hallelujah, John 8 and 12. I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Hallelujah. He is the light and he is the light we follow. Brethren. We don't want to have fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. We want the light of Christ in us. So that's why when we're told in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 22 to abstain from all appearance of evil, some versions say to flee all appearance of evil. If it even has the appearance of evil, why would we want to partake of it? Why would we want to confuse our listeners and our so-called fans even though us as Christians should not have so-called fans but see it makes sense it makes sense friends the confusion 
comes from Babylon. That's what Babylon means. It means confusion. Look back at the Tower of Babel. God confounded the languages because they wanted to be one. They wanted to be, they wanted to have their one world religion. And God confounded the languages. He confused them. And that's what this is right now. This is confusion. Having one foot in the world and one foot in the church. And many Christians are guilty of this. Not just Lecrae, but since Lecrae is a leader, that is why the spotlight is being shined on him right now. Again, I've listened to Lecrae's book and I understand what he's saying. I don't know that I necessarily believe it though. And as we get deeper into this video and this documentary today, you'll understand why. Brethren, abstain from all appearance of evil. That's what we're called to do. We are to walk in the light, friends. That light is Christ. Hallelujah. Galatians 2 and 20 says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Friends, that's the path that we're to walk on. Jesus told us, he told us, friends, the path that we're to walk. He said, friends, Matthew 7, 13 and 14. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Many are called, but few are chosen, friends. God, he's not willing that any should perish. He's very long-suffering. He's very, extremely long-suffering. Very merciful, very gracious, very sovereign. And again, he's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Every last one of us should come to repentance. But we all have that decision to make, friends. We all have to choose this day whom we're going to serve. No man can serve two masters, for either he'll hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Friends, we have to choose this day whom we're going to serve. And I pray Lecrae chooses to stay whom he will serve. He can't have the world and have the Lord. He can't build bridges to Babylon from the church. And bri build bridges from Babylon to the church. That's not how we do it, friends. The only bridges we want is from us to the Lord. If the gospel's not enough for you to bring souls to the kingdom, then you're doing it another way. It says a, a thief and a robber enter in another way. It says in 1 Kings 18 and 21, And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. You have to choose this day whom you will serve, like it says in Joshua 24 and 15. Friends, the scripture says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Being double-minded, being tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. This coming together, this together movement. Bridging 
that gap to Babylon, you know, as, as we see Lecrae talking about, always talking about building bridges, not barriers. No, we do need barriers. We see in the book of Nehemiah that Nehemiah was commissioned to rebuild the wall. And what was that wall? That wall was a barrier to keep the enemy out. We are to build barriers against the principalities and powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places, friends. We are to build barriers. Yeah, we do want to reach the lost. But we don't reach the lost by being worldly. We don't reach the lost with worldly means. We reach the lost with the gospel. It's the foolishness of preaching that saves them that believe. That's what it says in the scripture. The foolishness of preaching. Not singing your songs. Not singing your Babylonian songs because at the end of the day, that's what it is, friends. That's what it is. Look, Lecrae, we love you. We love you enough to tell you the truth. Most of your fans aren't going to do that. But see, I'm not a fan of yours, Lecrae. I'm just a man commissioned by the Lord to go off into to go off into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. The word of God tells us to to not trust the man. It says curses curses the man who trusteth in man and maketh flesh his arm and his heart departeth from the Lord. And Lecrae, you have so many young people looking up to you. Looking up to your music. They want to follow you. Act like you. Be like you. They're getting tattoos like you. We know what the word of God says about tattoos. And you can say that's being legalistic. Lecrae, I can pull up a video right now of you. Talking about how you would never get tattoos. And now all of a sudden you're getting tattoos all over you. Let's well, see, why is that? It's because you're being seduced. You are being seduced. The word of God says. Now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with the hot iron. They're being seduced with these spirits. And what spirit do I really see residing over so-called holy hip-hop, Christian hip-hop? Lecrae, Reach Records, 116. What spirit do I see there? That is the spirit of divination. The spirit of divination. And we will also prove that in this documentary. Please keep your eyes peeled. Keep your hearts open. Keep your Bibles open. Because everything that we're sharing, we plan to back up and prove with as much scripture as possible. God bless you. temples made by man's hand, but he dwells in what temples? These temples. Mm -hmm. So there's only one act that's spiritual um, in that sense, which is sexuality, where the, it's a spiritual act of, of two people becoming one. So he's saying, do, should you, um, should the temple of God, um, should prostitution be happening in the temple of God? And he said, no, that shouldn't be the case. Why? Because your body is the temple of the Lord. So there should be no room for any kind of prostitution. So we're talking about sexual immorality. We talk about your body as a temple. We're not talking about earrings. We're not talking about 
none of that type of stuff. Because if, if we're going to talk about that, we need to stop eating Big Macs, stop eating French fries, fried chicken. If we're going to say that's what it means when the body's a temple. It's, it's, it's a sexual immorality issue. Now, the other verse when it comes to tattoos is Leviticus um, 28. You shall not make any cuts on your body for the dead or tattoo yourselves. Why? I am the Lord. Now, context, okay? The, first of all, immediate context. Well, before we even get to context, let's look above it and let's look below it. Above it, it says you should not eat any flesh with blood in it. Dang, I guess if we're eating steak, medium rare, we're in sin. And um, it also says uh, above it, you shall not round off the hair on your temples or mar the edges of your beard. Yep. <laughs> so, when you go to the barber shop, you're in sin if this stands. So if I'm in sin for my tattoos, you're in sin for getting your hair cut, and you're in sin for eating red meat. But this is where everybody gets it. It says, um, above that in verse 23, when you come to the land and plant any kind of tree or food, when you shall regard as fruit, you shall regard as fruit is forbidden. Three years it shall be forbidden to you. You must not eat it. In the fourth year, the fruit is holy, an offering unto the Lord, but in the fifth year you can eat it. So if you're eating any fruit that is not going through a five-year process of cultivation, you're in sin. So if you're, if you're in North America, then you're, you're in sin. So now, we've got some issues here with this law. Now, contextually, right, why was God giving them these laws and these statutes, right? One is because... Israel needed a specific sets of rules, dietary rules, um, uh, rules for living because they lived in a completely different culture, completely different society um, that was beneficial for them. They didn't have some of the things that we have, preserves and so on and so forth. They could get sick a lot easier. This is why Israel is one of the healthiest nations because God helped preserve them by not letting them eat raw food at this time. We, there were no refrigerators, so on and so forth. So there was, it was a lot of, a lot of, those type of restrictions. Now, some of them were arbitrary because he's like, hey, I'm God, so do it because I say so. And that was okay. Now, in terms of making cuts on the flesh or tattoos, it says, cut your body for the dead or tattoo yourselves. Now, first of all, it says, for the dead or tattoo yourselves. Now, why would he say this? Because in this period of time, um, the pagan practice was to bleed yourself and mark yourself up in worship of the dead. So it was to, I'm going to mark myself up so that the dead can, can receive worship. I'm going to suffer. It was a way of mourning for people. Like, I'm going to suffer because you died. And I'm going to mark myself up in, in, in worship of you, in honor of you. And God, was, and, and God is saying, stop these pagan practices. Stop. You're trying to worship like they worship. Stop it. Because ultimately you're going to end up um, mastered by them. Right? So they're, they're going to end, you're going to end up being living under them. And, and living out what they live, worshiping who they worship, right? So he's telling them to stop this. So when we're talking about worship of the dead, we're talking about something completely different than, than just randomly marking on your body, you know what I'm saying? Which you would say common sense-wise, like, why would you even want to do that? That's what I would say to my kids. They're like, I want a tattoo. I'd be like, first of all, why? Why do you want to mark up your body with a bunch of ink? Like, like logically, why do you want to do that? Um, so if he doesn't have any real convictions for that or he doesn't feel like, I don't know, I just think it's cool, then I'll say, no, you probably don't need to do it because you can't get rid of it. <laughs> or you can pay, but I'll be like, um, if you just want some style, a little flair, I probably wouldn't do that, right? Now, if he comes to me, Dad, I'm just really fully convicted. I just, I feel like this is a great way for me to honor the Lord. I'm an urban missionary. I'm, you know, so on and so forth. Man, I'm just, I, it just demonstrates for me just my compassion, my commitment to the Lord Jesus and so on and so forth. Or I just like art. I'm very passionate about art. I feel like God has wired me to demonstrate his glory through art and artwork. And I'm just passionate about it. I don't worship it. But, you know, for me, it's just a great way to articulate his glory and his goodness in art. The same way a pianist would say, I just want to sit and write, compose beautiful songs. Then, hey, then you do what you do. You're free to do that. Um, you're not more or less a Christian because of that. Um, you know, I'm not telling people to run out and go get them. I think people shouldn't, in this day and age, everyone's getting them because it's, it's trendy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's, it, it's a fad, and you're not going to be able to get rid of it. Lil Wayne is going to be 52 one day, and his whole freaking body is covered <laughs> in junk. And I'm like, dog, you don't even know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. But the reason why they do that is because they don't have, like Christians should think eternally. They don't think with an eternal mindset. They, they right. think they're going to die tomorrow. Mm -hmm. They live for today. They live fast and die young. And that's the way they live, so they just do whatever feels good in the moment. And if we follow suit, 
we're going to pay the same consequences that they're going to pay just because we're trying to be cool like they're being cool. So that's something that I would think about and I would want people to uh, when they just want to run out and get random tattoos and so on and so forth. So, yep. Awesome. Yep. Man, I'm all about, you know, building bridges and not barriers, you know. So I think a lot of times people will put you in a box and that box says, I don't want anybody not like me inside this box. I just uh, am wrapping up a project I did with Zaytoven. We did one with Waka, Waka Flocka, and it's, it's crazy. I'm gonna let y'all hear a little sneak peek. This nigga get rich off a dope, if you let them tell it. Get a scale and a bowl, wrap it up and sell it. They got rich off a cush, if you let them tell it. You think about Kanye, and Kanye had his uh, his car accident, and, and that, changed his perspective on things and he wasn't afraid to like put his 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 personal struggles and his his uh spiritual stuff on display same kind of thing happened to me so early in your career you've been qualified as a christian rapper mm -hmm. and this what i would call sub genre of christian rap which is very uh, specific to the u.s you also won a grammy for best christian song mm -hmm. correct mm -hmm. what did it do for your career and what's your relationship to this term now i mean people like categories you know people use them to figure out stuff so i understand it i don't necessarily hold on to those because they don't really define me like who i really and truly am elvis presley won his only grammy in gospel but you know he's not just a gospel artist i'm not ashamed to embrace my christian faith or anything like that but i'm also i think when people say that they have all these ideas in their mind of what that looks like or what that means people get mad you know i do a song with ty dollar sign or big crit or whoever and then they're like wait what are you doing i thought you were a christian i'm like but see you have this idea of what we're how this is supposed to be mm -hmm. like that doesn't mean that's how it is that's your idea of it recently you've opened up your music a little more yeah especially with the, the last project all things work together yeah i mean you got uh boy wonder metro booming a plus ear drummers um <clears throat> of course tori kelly um, and Ty Dolla Sign. Just hold on and I'll find you. I'm hanging on by your thread, and all I'm clinging to is prayers. And every breath is like a battle. I feel like I ain't come prepared. Just... I've been down before to come up, I ain't stressing. Baby, I'm too busy counting all these blessings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Count it up, count it up, count it up. Line them up, line them up, line them up. Talking about the music, you've been uh, pushing it more beyond the u.s you have a concert coming up in paris yeah um why why does it matter for you to push it beyond the u.s music belongs to the world like the world should be able to experience it in the states music is kind of like trendy it's like all right next 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 and i feel like in europe y'all tend to like appreciate stuff if you like it you like it for a longer period of time do you feel like the kind of music that you do matters even more in trump's america oh y'all care about that overseas too they do very <laughs> much yeah for sure because what i do is i remind people you know your hope is not in circumstances and that there's hope in chaos so when it looks very chaotic you don't have to be like i'm done the circumstance may not be okay but overall you'll be fine you know i ain't been on twitter in a long time because everyone's complaining complaining so much negativity like you forget you woke up this morning you know, you forget like, oh, I'm alive. Three artists that you love to work with. I want to work with Two Chains. Two Chains is kind of like the trap goat. It's like clever, wise, but like it's still like hood. Kanye, he's legendary. You know, I think he's a genius in a lot of ways, and um, he's reinvented himself a million times. So I, I take notes on that. You know what I do? I do want to do a session before he just downright retires and never does anything else again with Dr. Dre. Mm -hmm. Cause I saw what Dre did with like, with Snoop and with Kendrick and mm -hmm. I hear about his process and I'm just always interested in like, man, what would It's real. Well, a ritual is pretty much a rite of passage is what it is. A ritual's definition is a religious or solemn ceremony consistent of a series of actions performed according to a pre prescribed order. The ritual summons the god or the demon, but the blood satisfies them. This is where child sacrifices start. To pay for your gift from the gods, you must sacrifice your gift from God above. You must pay with a human life like Cain did. So rituals include dancing, sex, chanting, astral sex, false tongues, tattoos, marks, self-inflicted pain, ritual pain, cutting, bleeding, drug use, drunkenness, trans, uh, transcendental meditation, yoga, homosexual sex. It's all ritual praise to the gods. 
Serenade is, during the ritual, music is of the utmost importance because the ritual gives you rite of passage. But the music plays the frequencies needed to summon the gods and cross them over into our plane. We summon whom we serenade. Taking the music of a song with a message that was negative and trying to change the message to positive is impossible because your brain has already accepted the song's message. Your mind has mind stamped the song's frequencies and related them to the original message. It is impossible to change that stamp. Even though you sing new words with your mouth, your body and chemicals have recorded the music and thus the original message is still prevalent in your mind. The industry knows that you can sing or speak positive words but emit negative energy at the same time. This is why they give their artists a positive song every now and then, but because the intent is evil, they are able to emit resonant frequencies that defile you even with a positive message. Holy hip hop is a prime example of this. The true intent of the artist is self-promotion, bragging, swagger, etc. But the message is Christ. This is why they continually fall into sin, promote the same lifestyle of the real hip hoppers. You know, the piercings, tattoos, sagging, grill, all that, but speak positive in their raps. They even copy the resonant frequencies of the Illuminati's music and put positive lyrics over that. This is the same as having a clean version versus an explicit one. The intent of the music remains and it changes your thought process. It's a trick to make you resonate to the industry standards. You can't redeem music because it's not matter. It's a particle. You can't redeem hip hop because it's an idea, not a living soul. Only man is a living soul. If he could redeem hip hop, then you could be able to redeem animals, devils, and demons. None are living souls, only man. You can't redeem music because it's not matter. It's a particle. You can't redeem hip hop because it's an idea, not a living soul. Only man is a living soul. If he could redeem hip hop, then you could be able to redeem animals, devils, and demons. None are living souls, only man. This is why God's music must originate with what? His intent. It cannot be a copy. Evil in, evil in music possesses evil energy and intent. It's not about the words. Look at somebody say it's not about the words. As much as it is the intent. People react to the intent or energy of the artist's resonant frequencies as well, not just the lyrics. It's not about what you're saying. It's about what you're feeling and doing, your intent. The Bible talks about this, and it calls it death and life are in the... Wait, stop, don't clap. It's not in the tongue. It's not in what you're saying. It's in the... What is power? Energy. Light! Power of the tongue. Yod means hand. Hand is what you move stuff with and arrange things with. Power of the tongue. Intent. Can I keep preaching? Need another Bible example? Jesus did it. Jesus walked by a fig tree. He was hungry and the fig tree didn't live up to its name. Jesus cursed it. You won't bear anything else. They came back, fig tree was with it. Now when Jesus does it, it doesn't take 30 days. It's, it's like instant. Because he is the son of the most high God. You think it understood Jesus' language? It is intent. Can I keep going? Ain't this good? Hip hop is the genre of choice of the Illuminati because it's simplistic enough so as to not stimulate thought but allow our receptors to be free to receive the message and the intent. Sampling music simplifies it even more because the mind is already trained, is already trained by the old school hit and thus, you are not only receiving a new sinful message with intent, but you now take on the original intent of the sample as well. 
The enemy has created an army of blind followers that defend their demise and shun truth for the sake of their musical drugs. I hear musical medicine, musical alchemy. This is good stuff right here, y'all. Y'all gonna give me some time, right? Find a person that says they love all kinds of music or they listen to all kinds of music and then the world calls them eclectic. But they are usually emotional wrecks. They depend on music because it's a drug to them. This guy, Richard Pellegrino, is a brain surgeon and he works in the trauma ward in the hospital. People come in the hospital high on uh, heroin. And so in order to get them off the heroin, get them off the high because they're about to die. They're right at the edge about to die from an overdose. So he gives them naloxone, which is a drug. That drug, it, uh, the drug binds to the opium receptors of the brain. And then when heroin, um, uh, when heroin is bound to these receptors, it kicks it out and takes their high down. Well, he said, if you find a group of people that, are, that love music or love a certain artist or whatever, when you give them the same naloxone, it changes the way they feel about the artist. Because what happens is these people with the opium uh, um, that's on the um, uh, heroin, when they take this naloxone, they jump up swinging and fighting. Ah, ah, and the doctor's like, what's wrong? You messed up my high. But you was about to die. Yeah, but you messed up my high. But you was a... You were about to die. The same thing, it binds, music binds to the same receptor. So he gave this same medication to some people that were crazy about music and they lost the desire for their music. What does that tell us? That tells us that when I try to take your music away, you come up swinging. No! Don't take my music away. I'm Hey everybody, this is Eric EJ Love. Just wanted to get back to you today and do a little video on 116 Reach Records, Lecrae, the whole crew promoting the Light Bear Initiative, I guess you could say. That's right, Light Bear. Now, for those of us who know what the Word of God says, for those of us who believe what the Word of God says, we know that the term or phrase light bearer is used in reference to Lucifer. And I will actually prove that today. I'm not just going to say it, but I'll actually prove it. I know there may have been some other people who might have done videos about this, but I pray that this video will be a blessing and Lord willing be the most thorough yet that has been released and I pray that there's anybody else who has any insight on this information on this topic at hand that they will do the same thing uh, as the Lord leads and release that information uh, basically exposing the light bear as this is the initiative of Reach Records and 116 and that clip that I just played was from their song Light Work. It's Reach Records, uh, 116, Lecrae, Andy Minio, Triple E, you know, those guys. I don't know if you could tell, but it really didn't sound any different than worldly music. But, you know, I'm probably just being a legalist and a Pharisee, and I probably have a religious spirit I'm sure I'll be accused of, but I have a video coming on that as well. So we're not going to dive into that just yet, but. Uh, there will be a video being released about the Pharisee and what a Pharisee is and what a Pharisee is not. So we're on uh, Reach Records merch line. It's their, uh, I guess you could say their, their merchandise website. It's linked up from their Instagram page. And we see uh, the light bear is just really being heavily promoted. 
I can zoom in on it. I'm sure you see it. You can also, you know, find this easily online for yourself. Um, we just see how they're really, really promoting this whole light bearer thing. They're even using this young lady here, and I mean, I don't know about you, but her, her, how she's posing and the look on her face, it just seems like it really attracts lust. It seems like a really lustful type of picture, if you ask me. And they, oh, Eric, you're just reaching. You're being a Pharisee. She's completely covered up. Yeah, but look at her eyes. Look at her face. It just seems really lustful while they're promoting this light bear. And who is the light bear? Well, we're going to get into that. Look at that. Some one-eye symbolism. More light bear stuff. More light bear promotion. You know, they got light bear phone cases. They got light bear t-shirts, hoodies, jackets. I mean, you name it. I mean, I don't know. Here we got some more one-eye symbolism with this light bear phone case. So, we're going to get into some scriptures in regards to who is that counterfeit light, that light bear, and also get into scriptures in regards to who is that real light. Alright, so... You get the point. There's the merchandise. There's the shirts. There's that lustful model. And uh, this is their Instagram page. Pretty much some of the same stuff. And they've been promoting this pretty much all year. Oh, let's see. They even got a billboard. They got a billboard in Houston, Texas promoting this. I mean, that's that's wild to me if you ask me, but... All right, so some more pictures. We'll go through this a little bit, but you get the point. So anyways, I want to go to Blue Letter Bible. And we're going to pull up. We're going to pull up or do a search for Lucifer. Now, mind you, you have to use the King James Bible because the King James Bible in English is pretty much the only Bible who uses Lucifer, who uses the uh, the word, the name Lucifer in Isaiah 14, 12. Now obviously, Bibles that may have came before the King James Bible may use Lucifer as well, but I'm sure the vast majority of us don't use, you know, the Wycliffe Bible or the Tyndale Bible or the Geneva Bible or the Bishop's Bible and so on and so forth, but we do use the King James Bible. And this will be the only Bible, modern Bible that we have available to us that actually uses Lucifer in Isaiah 14 and 12. So, we'll just go ahead and see what this pulls up. Alright, so here we have Isaiah 14 and 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weakest weaken the nations? And we'll go forward again. And we know in Hebrew, Lucifer is Halel. Obviously, Lucifer is like uh, it's that's transliteration is Halel. And we know that uh, Lucifer is basically from the Latin. And a lot of people say, oh, it's a, it's a mistranslation. That word's not supposed to be there. Look, I'll tell you like this. I trust the Lord and who he chose to put together that King James Bible and those translators who translated it. I trust their scholarship and their knowledge and, and understanding of the word and the scriptures better than any James White, the heretic. Yeah, I said it. I'm probably going to make a lot of people mad who sees this video. I believe James White is a heretic. And any other textual critic, uh, critic who comes against the King James Bible. And no, I'm not a Ruckmanite either. So don't throw me in that camp and don't refer to me as a King James onlyist. And I believe in King James onlyism. I don't uh, espouse to any of your uh, titles or any of your little... Uh, whatever you want to box people in, your little labels and stuff. We don't espouse to that over here, so yeah, you can kick rocks with all that. I'm not playing I'm not pulling any punches with this video, I'm gonna tell you right now. So Lucifer equals light bearer. 
Now let me zoom in on that if you can't see that good enough. Shining One, Morning Star, Lucifer, of the King of Babylon and Satan. Hello. Describing the King of Babylon. Lucifer is the light bearer. Do you see that? Do we see that? Lucifer equals light bearer. So why would Reach Records, 116, Lecrae, and, and these fellas, why would they name their initiative and their clothing Light Bear? Well, I think it's quite simple, to be honest. Let me pull up 2 Corinthians chapter 11. And, you know, I think we'll just go ahead and read... Uh, the uh, vast majority of this chapter, at least half this chapter, in context. Alright, so, it says, Would to God ye could bear with me a little in my folly, and indeed bear with me. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, yet so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. See, there's simplicity in Christ. We don't have to do all these initiatives. Like, there's simplicity in Christ. Everything doesn't have to be a trend, a hashtag, something um, um, people can, you know... I'm sorry. Let me not get sidetracked. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus... See, I'm always told there's no other Jesus. Let me read that again. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. See, friends, there is another Jesus that is preached. There's another spirit that's being received. And there's another gospel that's being preached, as Paul mentioned in Galatians 1, 6 through 9. We'll just actually read 6 through 10. I marvel... That ye, that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and will pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. And see, we know that these, these men, unfortunately, they want to be pleasers of men. They're trying to be pleasers of men. You know, that's why you have Lecrae yoking up with worldly individuals, worldly rappers. But I will say this, you know, the Word of God tells us that we are not to be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. And that we cannot serve two creators. We cannot serve two gods, rather. So, you know, Lecrae, he is an open and known Kappa Alpha Psi. And to become a member of the Kappa Alpha Psi fraternity, you have to bow down at the altar of Apollo. Now, he never rejected this, and he still promotes his Kappa Alpha Psi membership. So, with that being said, I mean... I mean... What God are you really serving? You know what I mean? And this is this is the uh, 
uh, what do you call it, the, um, the, the, the beginning rituals that they do to become a member. Um, but yeah, I've actually been in contact with, uh, with a former member of this fraternity and he was filling me in on all of this. You know, he has the, uh, what do you call that? The ritual books. And he also has ritual books from other fraternities as well, like Alpha Phi Alpha and Omega Psi Phi and, and these types of uh, fraternities, these Greek letter organizations. And, I mean, and all these different Greek letter organizations, you have to bow down to false gods. And Lecrae, had, to become a Kappa Alpha Psi, which he still represents, that means he bowed down on the altar of Apollo, and he's never forsaken it. He's never forsaken that. Uh, there's, other, there's other Christians, so-called Christians, who are a member of this. Uh, Jamal Bryant... And uh, what's that other guy's name? Marvin Sapp and Montel Jordan, uh, Smokey Norfolk, uh, Colin Kaepernick. You know these these people are all Kappa Alpha size. But, you know, and Lecrae. He's again he's yoked up doing doing music with worldly rappers. He's signed to Columbia Records. So I, I ask, you know, what gospel is actually being preached? Is it the gospel? According to the Word of God, or is it another gospel? You know what Jesus is being preached. Is it the Jesus according to the Scriptures, or is it another Jesus? Is it another spirit? So, you know, I just think it's it's quite telling, uh, quite telling that this is who uh, this is who so many of the youth are looking up to, and I don't blame the youth. Don't get me wrong. I don't blame the youth one bit. They don't. They may not know any different. And I know a lot of Lecrae fans, 116 fans. I mean, I've dealt with them by going out preaching at their events and going to these different conferences. And they really ride or die for Lecrae. And they'll say I'm a legalist. They'll say I'm a Pharisee. But why? Because, because I'm exposing, I'm reproving the unfruitful works of darkness like it tells us to do. In Ephesians 5:11, and it actually tells us, you know, to not even to not just reprove them, but let's us read what else it says. It says, "And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them." So we're not to even have fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. That means we're not to be yoked together, unequally yoked together with unbelievers. You know, music was created strictly. For the worship and praise of God. So, as a Christian artist, well, or you'd rather not be considered a Christian artist, Lecrae, but as, a, as uh, somebody who makes music and you just happen to be a Christian, if, if your music that's being made is not glorifying God, then who is it glorifying? I mean, I've, I've seen plenty of Lecrae, Andy Minio, 116 videos, you know, and songs, and I used to listen to Lecrae. And I had to repent of that. And, you know, as Lecrae has gone on, I mean, in his music, he barely even mentions the name of Jesus anymore. He barely mentions Jesus. Most of these guys barely mention Jesus in their music anymore. You know, and, and again, it's, it's, no, it's no small thing, you know, that Satan, that he will have, you know, ministers of righteousness, so to speak, uh, you know, transforming themselves you know that they're that they're transformed as ministers of righteousness but they're really not they're ministers of satan you know so light bearer initiative the lucifer initiative you know you can just type in light bearer and, and like a wikipedia result first thing that pulls up wikipedia light bearer lucifer called light bearer as the latin word lucifer means light bringing Lucifer, the light bearer. The light bearer. I mean, come on. I mean, really? So, so basically your initiative is the Lucifer initiative. Which I understand because, see, Freemasons, at the highest levels, they worship Lucifer. That's who Freemasons worship. And, and I believe 
there's obviously in these different fraternities, Greek letter organization, no matter what fraternity and sorority it is, they all link back to Freemasonry. You know, you go through rituals, you go through ceremonies, initiations, and, and uh, to excel up in the ranks, to get to higher levels and higher statuses, you got to do certain things. You know, just as in Freemasonry, you know, to get to the next degree, you have to do certain things to get to the next degree. So, I just find it quite strange that they would want to, ref you know, refer to their initiative as the Light Bear Initiative. You know, you type in Light Bear, and what comes up? Oh, look at that. Freemasonry. Of course it does. You know, Lucifer, Light Bear. You know, I didn't do a lot of, I mean, because most of this is common knowledge, honestly. And you can just easily Google all this stuff for yourself, you know, to look into Lucifer. I mean, I wouldn't look into it too heavily um, because ultimately we got to go after the real light. We got to we gotta study the real light. And by studying the real light, by knowing who the real light is, it will show you who the, who the, the darkness is. I can go to Lecrae's Instagram right now and tell you it's not about Jesus. I mean, there's barely anything on his Instagram that even points me to the Lord or in his lyrics. I mean, here we got, you know, the light bear, light work, you know. Uh, where's that picture at? Here we got him looking like he's a gangster with the ski mask or whatever, or his face covered. Um, here we got, you know, his own shoes. Uh, here we got a, a doll made of him. And what is that doll doing? Throwing up the horns. Now, does that seem like a light bearer to you? And I know people can say, "Oh, well, that's the H. That's that's the that's the H for H Town." So when does when does fleeing all appearance or abstaining from all appearance of evil apply? I mean, come on, seriously. Here he is throwing up the horns again, Houston, Texas. Oh, it's all for H Town. Come on, man. You know that's the devil horns. Quit playing with me. You know, and honestly, at this point, I don't even have, like, I'm not going to be, um, you know, all, like, compassionate towards them about this. Because they've been warned and they've been shown the truth. And all Lecrae does in Andy Min in Minio is all they do, like, in interviews and whatnot, they just mock. They will mock and they'll say, oh, oh, I, you know, about the whole pyramid. Oh, I guess I'm Illuminati, right? I didn't, but you know, it's funny, we always, nowadays, everything we do, we think, we're always like laughing because we're like, I wonder what they're going to find in this one to think it's Illuminati. I thought just us being upside down alone was going to be enough for them to say I was an Illuminati, like, but no, I didn't, I was thinking steeple, but I guess triangles are, somehow they represent some kind of secret society. So I got to talk to my kids because they've been doing a lot of geometry lately. So I wonder if the teachers are inducting them in some kind of Illuminati activity. I need to find out about this. It's getting, it's getting crazy out here, man. Geometry, <sighs> steeples. If you didn't know, Peace Preparatory Academy in, in Atlanta, English Avenue, man. You know, support, look it up, and uh, you know, get the baby some education. Get them away from these evil triangles. Ridiculous. There's only octagons, squares, and circles being taught at this school. You know, oh, I better not let my uh, my, my children, you know, are doing, uh, what do you say, geometry or whatever. Oh, it must be Illuminati, right? You know, I, with all the triangles and stuff. I mean, he just mocks it, man. The guy is very condescending and very mocking. And, and I mean, it's it just shows to me what spirit is working through him. Instead of actually sitting back and being like, you know what? Maybe, maybe people are saying this for a reason. Maybe they're saying this, you know, maybe this is something I should actually take a look at. You know, examine myself. You know, seriously. I mean, come on. Here he is a chance to rap. Or, you know, I'm not going to get too deep in it. Here he is uh, repping his uh, um, fellow brother, Kappa Alpha Psi member, Colin Kaepernick. Because, you know, that's another thing, you know. Um, we're to call no man, no woman, you know, whatever. Our brother, our sister, our mother. You know, except those that do the will of the Father. You know, Jesus said those that do the will of, of the Father, which is in heaven, are his mother and his brother and his sister. So, 
when you're calling these different people in these different fraternities, your your brother or your sister in the sorority, um, yeah, I don't think so. I mean, because because here's the thing: to be a Freemason, the the number one uh, prerequisite for being a Freemason is you have to believe in a God. Atheists cannot be a Freemason. They don't care if you believe in, in Krishna, in Buddha, in Muhammad, or, you know, God of the Bible, Jesus Christ. They don't care as long as you believe in a God. You can believe in Confucius, uh, Confucius. you can believe in Zoroastrianism, Mormonism, doesn't matter. But you have to believe in a God. In a God. You know, and... and so these are the people you're yoking up with. These are the people you're calling your brother and your sister. You know. So I just wanted to share that quickly. Yeah, the light bearer. The light bearer is Lucifer. But who is the light according to scripture? I'll just read a few scriptures here. Um, let's see. You can see that. Maybe, maybe not. Jesus said, ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Amen. Matthew 6, and 23, it says, The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? Matthew 10, 27. What I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in the light. And what ye hear in the ear, that preach ye upon the housetops. Amen. Let's see. Luke eleven thirty three and down. No man, when he hath lighted a candle, put it in a secret place, neither under a bushel, but on a candlestick, that they which come in may see the light. The light of the body is the eye. Therefore, when thine eye is single, thy whole body also is full of light. But when thine eye is evil, thy body is also full of darkness. Take heed, therefore, that the light which is in thee be not darkness. If thy whole body, therefore, be full of light, having no part dark, the whole shall be full of light, as when the bright shining of a candle doth give thee light. Therefore, whatsoever ye have spoken in the darkness shall be heard in the light, and that which ye have spoken in the ear in closet shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. Amen. Let's see, uh, John 3.19, And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For every one that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they, be, that they are wrought in God. Amen. Jesus said, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. So Jesus is the true light. Satan is a counterfeiter. That's what we, we touched on a little bit earlier. Jesus, we see, is the real light. He said, then Jesus said unto them, yet a little while is the light with you. Walk while ye have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whither he goeth. While ye have light, believe in the light, that ye may be the children of light. These things spake Jesus and departed and did hide himself from them. And he goes on and says, I am come a light into the world that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. Acts 13.47 This is another good one to use against Hebrew Israelites. For so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. Amen. Jesus spoke this to Paul. 
to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Amen. Let's see. Second Corinthians 4. It says in verse 3, But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, hath shined in our hearts, to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Amen. Second Corinthians 6.14 be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness? Ephesians 5.8 For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. Ephesians 5.13 But all things that are approved are made manifest by the light, for whatsoever doth make manifest is light. 14 Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. So, we get the point on the scriptures. That's a good place to stop for that. Thank y'all for exposing people. And you went to I school and you got your degree? Yeah. What, yeah. what college did you go to? University of North Texas. You Somebody hit us and said you're a Kappa, right? Yes. Okay. Oh, what you gosh. major in? Envy wanted to be Yo, a Kappa. Joetta, Envy wanted to be a Kappa so bad. Uh, pretty, says, pretty he's, like, he's, boy, a he's a Kappa. He's a Kappa. Larry. <laughs>
Okay, now that we got you up to speed on Lecrae and his involvement with Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity, let's just quickly prove through their ritual handbook the rituals that they must do and who their God is. So just wanted to prove right quick that yes, I do have a copy, a PDF copy of the Kappa Alpha Psi Ritual Handbook. You can find this on Scrib.com or if you really want a copy of it, I could probably be generous and email you a copy for a small fee. But nonetheless, just wanted to share this with you. Um, you can see here some information. Forward. Uh, the number. Let's register with the Grand Chapter. Uh, the Grand Chapter of Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity, 1968. Goes on and tells the history. Uh, the property that is to be secured in Chapter Archives. You know, of course, one of those mem one of those pieces of property, of course, is the Holy Bible. Scrolls, etc. Now, also, I just want to add this because some people might be like, "Well, how do we know Lecrae is an actual member? Maybe he's just an honorary member." Well, this is according to the Kappa Alpha Psi handbook or the ritual uh, handbook, I'm sorry, that, sorry, my camera stands a little off, that Kappa Alpha Psi does not have honorary membership. Membership is confirmed, conferred by initiation only. The national meeting is the grand chapter meeting. Meetings of provinces are province councils. Only official badges and other insignia of the fraternity manufactured by the official jeweler under contract with the Grand Chapter will be recognized, and they may be obtained only through the National Headquarters. So once again, you can't be an honorary member, you can't be a fake member, you have to go through the initiation rites to become a member of this fraternity. So we just wanted to basically get that established right quick. And I'll also fill you in on some other details in regards to the fraternity. Now, there's additional items that are required for the initiatory ceremony. And I'll just kind of skim through some of these. But they need ink. They need an open flame. Uh, producing um, means of producing blue and red light. Think about the Blue Lodge and the Red Lodge. Uh, supply of crackers, rope made into a noose, hmm. a branding iron, a small piece of raw meat, sufficient amount of sand or gravel, um, and a bunch of other things. So, oh, also uh, binders for the wrist, paddles, clubs, whips and other instruments of torture are on display at the abode of the Thracians. These are not to be used, but they are on display. Hmm. Alright, so we have different, um, like basically different uh, offices in the fraternity. And most of this stuff is just you know, whatever. I'm not really too concerned about it. I'm just kind of skimming through. Basically proving that I do have the uh, ritual. But I do want to just get to a couple different parts in it where it talks about that they have to worship on the altar of Apollo. As we've already seen prior to this. Okay, but thank you guys for your patience and so far in this documentary, I hope a 
foundation has been thoroughly laid to see that Lecrae unfortunately is building bridges to Babylon he says we're to build bridges not barriers well as I was reading earlier or I stated earlier that barriers we think about barriers uh, God commanded Nehemiah to rebuild the wall the temple now barriers can actually be good things because barriers you know like as walls and other types of things can serve as a defense mechanism against things that we don't want to be yoked to and things that we don't want to come in and be attacked by so there's not necessarily anything wrong with having barriers now depending on the context that he's using it in obviously makes a difference but we have to understand somebody who's gone through initiation rites and Kappa Alpha Psi and possibly even Freemasonry as we will later venture to see we have to realize that there's always a exoteric which is the outward meaning of something and then the esoteric which is the inward meaning of something okay so for instance right up top here the pole mark says then kneel or the pledge okay um, I can basically just kind of skim through this let's see the, the pledge is considered a barbarian. This is interesting. All right, so the pull mark says, Barbarian, you have indicated by your pledge a desire to become a member of this fraternity, but before you are permitted to enter, are you willing to swear a solemn oath to keep secret forever everything that may transpire, transpire or be revealed to you during your initiation? And the pledge or the barbarian says, I am. And the polar mark goes on and says, Then kneel at the sacred altar of Kappa Alpha Psi and repeat after me the following oath. So, once they agree to this, now they have to kneel at the altar and then they have to repeat a oath. Now, the same Bible that they're using in this ceremony the initiation ritual whatever you want to refer to it as the same Bible the same Holy Scriptures in there say that we're not to make secret oaths we're not to swear to no man you know let your yes be yes and your no be no yea be yea and, and nay be nay etc so the pledge kneels and repeats I Lecrae Moore in the presence of Almighty God and the members of Kappa Alpha Psi here assembled and at the sacred Delphic Shrine do solemnly swear that I will keep secret forever all things that may transpire or be revealed to me during my initiation. So, we're going to read that for now. Um, we're going to, a little bit here, dive deeper into the sacred Delphic Shrine. This is going to be interesting, friends. Now again, people say, oh, people don't know what they're doing. This is just, you know, it's all fun and games, etc., etc. You know, that may be true to an extent, but you're sitting here swearing oaths and, and doing different things. I mean, I don't know. I, I just don't know what to say, man. Alright, um, now we're going to go over the part where it talks about the brand. This is the mark that they receive. Um, I, want, I hope you can see that. Alright, so it says, the brand. In this test, a designated member heats a twist of wire to incandescence over the fire. The same fire may be used for the business at the Oracle. We'll come to that later. In the presence of the pledge, he experiments with branding iron on a piece of raw meat so that the pledge may get the odor of burning flesh. 
Mm. Another designated member has a test tube containing a little hot water in the end. At a given signal, the pledge is grasped and held firmly with his back to the brander, and as the wire is placed upon the raw meat, the other member places the rounded end of the test tube of hot water momentarily on the pledge's back between the shoulder blades. Great care must be taken to see the test tube is not hot enough to burn the skin. The effect of the illusion may be heightened if the spot where the test tube touches is covered with a small piece of adhesive. The reaction of the pledge to these tests cannot be appreciated unless quiet is maintained at the time of the application. In another room, members have completed the preparation for the third test. And it talks about burning sands. I'm not going to read that. Um, it's funny, though, because... Well, you know what? We're going to keep reading it. Why not? A s burning sands. A small quantity of sand is divided into two parts. Oh, that's stupid. i got to get a new camera stand, for stand friends. and placed in a shallow pan or box or spread on a paper. The first portion is moistened slightly and kept at room temperature. The second portion is heated but is insufficiently hot to cause injury to the feet. A pan of ice water, preferably containing cracked ice, is prepared. These three items are placed on the floor on stride apart. The pledge is instructed to take three fatal steps. He first steps onto sand at room temperature. The second stride is on the hot sand and the third is on the pan of water. The pledge is then permitted to dress and returned to the temple of, Thra of the Thracian priest. The altar is prepared and a candle furnishes the only illumination. The pledge is stretched out prone on the floor with his head directed toward the altar. The blindfold is removed. Standing guard over the pledge is an executioner with a sword. The priest enters. Oh boy. So here comes the priest. The priest says, Good worshippers! Is the sacrifice in place? Alright, so I'm not going to read all that, but... We do see, um... They also worship a god named Ares. Because the priest says... Great and wise Ares, today thy children offer unto thee this sacrifice. Show forth thy divine approval by now flaring forth another red flame of light. The priest now flashes the bulb covered with the blue cellophane. All the Thracians become suddenly horrified and interpret the failure of the gods to send another red flame as an indication of their disapproval of the sacrifice which the Thracians offered. This is so stupid. I'm sorry. I mean, it's just stupid to even do this stuff, but it is what it is. So. Alright. So, the strategist, he's another uh, officer. Or, you know, you could say, uh, another office um, in the fraternity. The, strat the strategist strategist how we pronounce it says come barbarian let us seek the abode of the mighty oracle of delphi again as i said before we're going to get into the oracle and the delphic shrine and the strategist keeps the pledge walking until the members have arranged the assembly room to represent the temple of delphi the room is arranged with an altar on which are a crucible of fire and a single candle. No one is in sight. The oracle should be concealed in a nearby room or behind a curtain. The strategist removes the blindfold at the door of the room and they approach the altar. As soon as they reach the altar, the oracle speaks. And the oracle says, What one in need doth dare to venture here to this great fane to Delphos, Apollo dear? 
what ends seek ye, what mysteries have explained, what knowledge is sought in mighty Delphos' name. Alright, so I'm not going to read all that. It's like their little, basically it's like a seance. Um, but they'll keep talking about the Delphic Shrine and Apollo and Ares. But there's a few other points I wanted to touch on this and then kind of wrap up the ritual handbook. Like I said, if anybody wants a copy of this for a small fee, we can make that happen. Alright, so... So here we have, let's see, okay, the chief outlaw says, see ye this dolphin form described along its edge, and all being, all the uh, initiates say we do. Chief Outlaw says, This is the spear of the great Delphic god, Apollo, which he wields in defense of those who worship at his shrine. All say, rushing out excitedly, O oh, mighty Apollo, forgive us our rash intent. The strategists and pledge proceed on their journey. While the pledges walked around, the members returned to the assembly room. Which has been in order, which has been put in order, as they approach the door, an alarm is sounded. So, <laughs> I mean, here we see they're talking about worshiping at his shrine. They call him O Mighty Apollo. They're asking him for forgiveness. And again, I mean, we can keep going back and forth talking about, oh, you know, it's not really that serious, but is it? I mean, what does God think about this? What does God think about people worshipping at the uh, Delphic Shrine of Apollo? I mean, I just think it's, I think it's a little foolish to think that God just winks at this. Because we know what it says in uh, Acts 17, 29 through 31. You know, God did at one time wink at their ignorance, right? But now he commands all men everywhere to repent. All right, so the Paul Mark says, Repeat after me, barbarian, the following oath of allegiance. I, Lecrae Moore, in the presence of Almighty God and the members of Kappa Alpha Psi here assembled and at the sacred Delphic Shrine do hereby solemnly declare my unswerving allegiance to the grand fraternity of Kappa Alpha Psi and do solemnly swear that I will ever respect, obey, and defend its constitution and all of the regulations, emblems, and ritualistic work thereunto appertaining. So that's the uh, oath of allegiance that they swear. Once again, Scripture tells us not to make any sacred oaths or any secret oaths. Um, let's see here. Alright, check this out. Now this is very interesting too. Alright, so the poll mark, he goes on and says that Kappa Alpha Psi differs from other college fraternities in that it is more than an ordinary fraternity. It is an organization for the purpose of achievement. It is designed to enrich the lives of its members and to awaken within them high ideals and honorable ambitions. It is ardently hoped that each chapter will ever stand for progress and true manliness and that each will prove a valuable ally to the college authorities in creating a healthful moral atmosphere in the college by maintaining a high standard of scholarship and by ridding the college of all that and by ridding the college of all that is dishonorable and base fraternity knowledge and fidelity our powerful means of achievement, hence the motto of Kappa Alpha Psi is this, achievement through fraternity, knowledge, and fidelity. So, I mean, again, people would say, oh, they don't know what they're doing, but uh, knowledge is part of this. 
I mean, the Gnosis is definitely a part of this. So, I mean, they can act like they don't know what they're doing, but, I mean, they're the ones sitting here making oaths and pledges to, you know, Apollo and his Delphic Shrine. And like I said, we're going to get more into that. Um, I just want to read a few more things. And uh, that should pretty much do it with this. So sorry, this is kind of being a little bit longer than I anticipated. Kind of drawn out, but um, I just think it's interesting. Let's see. Alright, it says... But on your road from the Delphi, from Delphi, the great Delphian god Apollo came to your relief. Now notice it capitalizes G. <laughs> came to your relief and with his great spear slew the wretched outlaws and put them to ignominious, ignominious, I, I'm sorry, I can't say that word, ignominious route. And in your future contests with the evil forces of which I have just spoken, you will be aided and delivered by the forces of of righteousness and the great God of all the earth if you only manifest an unswerving fidelity to the clan of Kappa Alpha Psi its principles and teachings so not to the Word of God not to the Bible you know we're, we're to have an unswerving fidelity and loyalty to the Word of God the Word of God tells us to not be tossed to and fro by various winds of doctrine you know the teachings of the Kappa Alpha Psi fraternity and you know bowing down to the altar of apollo that's you know that's another doctrine man so we're not to be partaking of that um, my hopes and prayers are that lecrae you know maybe he'll see this video maybe he will repent and get out of that he has to know though in doing that you know he may lose he may lose some of his status he may even get smeared but see we have to choose this day whom we serve you know he has to choose you know the god of this world or the god of heaven and earth you know he has to choose between satan and 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 the lord almighty all right so i want to read this part and, and this to me uh confirms who the god of these fraternities and in this particular case kappa alpha psi is all right so um it says let us therefore approach the throne of grace and tender our gratitude for our brother's life and work and beseech the Father for his compassionate comfort. Now, all, this is all the uh, initiates repeat this. They say, O oh, Supreme Architect of the Universe, or Great Architect of the Universe, just like the Freemasons in whose mind there is always purpose we praise thee for thy good gift of life for its wonder and mystery its friendships and fellowships we thank thee for the the ties which bind us one to another show us the meaning which lies hidden in the heart of sorrow disappointment and grief we thank thee for this thy servant so their god is the same God as Freemasonry. I want to zoom in on that. I really hope you can see this. The Supreme Architect of the Universe. Now, I had a person send me a message and say they heard an interview of Lecrae a few years ago where he referred to God as the architect or the great architect. Now, I, I don't know where that interview is. I haven't heard it for myself. So, I can't say 100% sure if that is true, that he did say that. However, you know, in his fraternity, that's what they refer to their creator, their God, as, as the supreme or great architect of the universe, just like Freemasons. So, with that being said, there wasn't a whole lot more I really wanted to check out on this. I really just wanted to just touch on a few points, you know, prove that that their God is a different God. It's not Jesus Christ. 
even though they try to say it is, and they try to incorporate scripture in it. The thing about these fraternities, the things, the, the thing about these fraternities, Kappa Alpha Psi, Freemasonry, etc., is to be a member, as I've stated before, you have to believe in a God. So you can be a Muslim, you can be a Buddhist, you can be a Hindu, you can be, you know, whatever religion you want. You can be a false Christian, you could be I don't know how you could be a real true Christian and, and, and remain in these organizations. Point being, you have to believe in a God. You can't be an atheist. So you're sitting here getting involved in these fraternities, taking these oaths, doing these binds, binding yourself together with each and every member of this fraternity, past, present, future, and calling them your brothers, etc., uh, calling this person, you know, you know, worshiping at this person's feet, worshiping in that person's feet, and you know, again, this is all completely opposed to what it says in the Word of God. So I just really wanted to include this aspect of it, and we're going to get into some greater details here in a little bit in regards to the Delphic Shrine and what the Word of God has to say about this. So stay tuned, and we'll be right back. Okay, so when we were talking about the Delphic Shrine, the Oracle of the Delphic Shrine, the Delphic Shrine of Apollo, etc., it brought to mind a particular scripture in the Word of God. And the scripture that I'm about to read, it also goes back to what we were speaking about earlier in the documentary about the spirit of divination. So, in Acts 16 and 16, it says, And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which shew unto us the way of salvation. And this did she many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee, in the name of Jesus Christ, to come out of her. And he came out that same hour. And when her masters saw that the hope of their gains was gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers and brought them to the magistrates, saying, These men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe, being Romans. And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bands were loosed. And the keeper of the prison, awaking out of his sleep, and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light, and sprang in, and came trembling, and fell down before Paul and Silas, and brought them out, and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord, and to all that were in his house. And he took them that same hour of the night, and washed their stripes, and was baptized, he and all his straightway. Amen. That's a good place to stop for now. But backing up to verse 16. It says that there was a damsel possessed with a spirit of divination. And that spirit is also considered python. It's a python spirit. Now, we're just going to go ahead and zoom in on...
John Gill's. Actually, you know what I'll probably do? We'll zoom in on John Gill's um, commentary on this. All right. So, in the Greek text, it is the Spirit of Python, the Alexandrian copy, which we don't use, and the Vulgate Latin version read the Spirit of Python. The same with Apollo, who was called Pythias, as was his oracle, from the people coming to him, to inquire of him and consult with him about difficult matters, or rather, from the Hebrew word, which signifies a serpent. And so Apollo is said to have his name Pythias, from his killing the serpent Typhon, or Python, hence the city of Delphos, where was the oracle of Apollo, also called Pytho, the prophetess that sat upon the golden tripos and delivered out the oracles, Pythia, and the feasts and plays instituted to the honor of Apollo were called the Pythian feasts and plays, and the place of the oracle Pythium. And so this maid, or the spirit in her, pretended to divine and foretell things to come. And the Arabic renders it an unclean spirit, foretelling future things. The Jews make this spirit of Python to be the same with Ab, which we render a familiar spirit. Leviticus 20, 27, Deuteronomy 18, 11. And the Septuagint by Engastromythos, a ventriloquist, one that seemed to speak out of his belly and pretended to predict future events. And most of the versions in the Polyglot Bible render it by Python, the word here used. So that explains the word and adds that it is one that speaks out of his armholes as those sort of people did from the several parts of their bodies and even from their secret parts. The word signifies a bottle, and they were called masters or mistresses of the bottle, either because the place on which they sat and from whence they gave forth their oracles was in the form of one, or they made use of a bottle in their divinations, or as Schindler observes, being possessed. They swelled and were inflated like bottles, and being interrogated, they gave forth answers out of their bellies concerning things past, present, and to come. And this speaking out of their bellies might be done without the possession of a real spirit, and much less was it from God, a Plutarch, a heathen, and heathen himself observes. It is foolish and childish to think that God, as the ventriloquists formerly call Eurycleans, and now Pythonus, should hide himself in the bodies of prophets using their mouths and voices as instruments to speak with for this was done by turning their voices down their throats um, so long story short we see here that the spirit of divination it originates at least in this context, from Apollo. So, this is the God, this is the, the Greek God, that Lecrae, when he became a member of this Kappa Alpha Psi fraternity, bowed down to. He bowed down to the spirit of divination. And this is the spirit, as I said earlier, that I believe resides over not only music, but hip-hop, and so-called Christian hip-hop. There is no such thing as Christian hip-hop or holy hip-hop. You can't make something that's unholy, holy. Uh, just like the clip we played from G. Craig Lewis earlier, you know, you can't redeem something that's inanimate. You know, it's it's it's... You know, you can't redeem matter. You can only redeem a, a, a person's soul. Animals can't be redeemed. You know, 
insects, trees, plants, they can't be redeemed. Music can't be redeemed. Only a human soul can be redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. So, you know, for everyone to say that, oh, hip-hop, you know, oh, hip-hop's okay, or rock and roll's okay. No, it's not. No, it's not. So... Just really wanted to bring that to the forefront, you know. We're talking about this Delphic Shrine, the oracles of the Delphic Shrine. And, you know, it said that they had much, they received much gain from what she was doing. You know, just like Lecrae's handlers, you know, even himself, they're receiving much gain from what they're doing. So, God forbid that this spirit of divination gets cast out of Lecrae. God forbid the spirit of divination gets cast out of, of uh, Andy Minio and 116. But I'm not finished. We're going to prove even more, sorry, that this is the spirit that resides over 116. We're going to prove even more. Alright, so this is a picture I found from Reach Records Instagram page and I'll include a better picture of it outside of this one right here and we see that we have the one one six and the S in the six is in the shape of a serpent and it is a serpent it is a snake and we see that it's going after a dove, which we know the dove is representative of the Holy Spirit. So why in the world would 116, why would Lecrae's art team, or I should say the spirit behind it, use a serpent for the S? Because I always thought when I seen just the 116 written out, that the S did kind of seem like it was shaped like a serpent. And now when I see this picture that's from the Reach Records Instagram page. Now, earlier this year, Lecrae and Reach Records both cleaned out their Instagram. So a lot of these pictures that I have right now, you're not going to find on there. And that could be because maybe they seen the videos that I put out prior to this one. Basically kind of exposing this and exposing what they're showing. But nonetheless, it's clear as day. That's a serpent going after a dove. Now, I'm sure 116 fans, Lecrae fans are going to say to me, well, the Word of God says that we're to be wise as serpent and harmless as doves. But to me, it looks like the serpent is going after that dove. And again, why would you incorporate a serpent in your logo? But I'm going to touch on this 116 even more because they say it means Romans 116, but they say 116. So we know that what it says that what Romans 116 means, you know, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. It's that power, it's that dunamis power of God unto salvation. But, you know, they, they tote how they're unashamed, they're unashamed, they're not ashamed. But it really seems like they're ashamed to me because I've watched countless interviews, and I'm not going to put all of them in this documentary today, but I've watched countless interviews, and Lecrae barely mentions Jesus, barely mentions God. I mean, I understand sometimes the interviews are controlled, Sometimes they're not. So, my thing is, is nonetheless, if you have that platform, if you have that opportunity, if you have that moment, just say, man, first and foremost, I want to give all praises to the Most High. I want to give all praises to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, because without Him, I wouldn't even be here today. But see, here's the thing. Lecrae took his oaths. He's make his, he made his oaths, and he continues to make his oaths. And as we're going to see... In a little bit here, it's quite possible that 
the Kappa Alpha Psi oaths aren't the only oaths Lecrae made. It's quite possible that Lecrae could be a Freemason. Now, I know you may say, oh, Eric, that's, that's going overboard. But see, here's the thing. Many people, when they join these fraternities like Kappa Alpha Psi, Alpha Phi Alpha, Omega Psi Phi, and so on and so forth, it doesn't just stop there. That's just like the beginning. And then they move on and graduate into Freemasonry. You know, a perfect example of that is Shaquille O'Neal, Omega Psi Phi. He goes on and becomes a Freemason. You know, it's it's not much of a it's not much of a leap for these guys to do that because we as we already showed, it's the same God in these fraternities as it is in the Freemasonic fraternities. It's the great or supreme architect of the universe. So, like I said, we have the spirit of divination here that resides over 116 in Reach Records. I think it's pretty clear and it's pretty obvious, don't you? And I think it's pretty clear and it's pretty obvious that he's building these bridges to Babylon. And, and here's how I'm going to show you that even more. Once again, to be a fraternal member of, of any of these fraternities, you have to believe in a God. You can be a Muslim, you can be a Hindu, you can be a Buddhist, you can be a professing Christian and be a Kappa Alpha Psi. Just as you can be all those religions and any other religion and be a Freemason. Now, once again, what did I say earlier that this is all about a one world religion, a one world government, a one world system, the beast system, a one world currency. That's what all of this is about. That's what the Babylonian beast system is all about. It's all about amalgamating everything back together as one, just as it was in Genesis 11. We know 11 equals confusion. We know 6 is the number of a man. 116. This is the confusion of a man. Man is confusing you. But God, he is not the author of confusion. He's not. We also know 11 means chaos, like 9-11. It was 9-11 here. You know, the, what was it, the 17th anniversary of 9-11. As we stated earlier, 116 upside down and backwards is 9-11. We know Satan, we know the enemy, he likes to do things backwards. Think about backmasking in music. And I'll just play that for you right quick here. Once again, the backmasked version of the Lecrae Ty Dolla Sign song Blessings, where it sounds like Ty Dolla Sign is saying, Murder, murder yourself. Murder, 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 murder yourself. It sounds like he's saying. Now again, I don't think that's a coincidence. Let's go back once again to what G. Craig Lewis was stating about music and the frequencies that are in the music. Sometimes it's not the lyrics that are being said. You know, say they could say, oh, well, he said Jesus in the song. He was giving praise. It could be the beats. We got Lecrae now making music with Zaytoven. A, a worldly beat maker who makes beats for all kinds of wicked artists. I mean, I could just name some for you right now, if you don't mind. Zaytoven has made beats for Gucci Mane, I know. Um, who else has he made beats for? The Migos, Future, Waka Flocka, Lecrae, Little Uzi Vert, Little Uzi Vert, Little Uzi Vert. Little Lucifer, that's what, his, that's what that guy's name is. Little, Luzi, little Uzi Vert, Lucifer. These are just some of the people that Zaytoven's made beats for. So, I mean, this is... Man, so why is Lecrae getting beats from him? Why does Lecrae want to get beats from Dr. Dre? Look at the people Dr. Dre's done work for. Snoop Dogg. Eminem, 50 Cent, 
Tupac, Death Row Records. You know, the list goes on and on and on. Many more people Dr. Dre's done beats for, but those are some of the big names. And we know most of that music was nothing but filth and trash. And don't get me wrong, Tupac, he had, um, now let me back up, Tupac was like Lecrae's favorite, favorite rapper. He was mine, you know, my favorite worldly rapper when I was still into that. You know, Tupac, he, he stood for a lot, but the problem was, is he, he didn't stand for the right things, and that was Jesus Christ. You know, I believe Tupac had a good heart and good intentions, but he needed he needed Christ in his life. And it's a shame that I I hope I hope and pray Tupac found Jesus before he passed, but I mean I really don't know. I really, really don't know. I pray he did, but I'll leave it at that. But anyway, so these are the kind of people that Lecrae is joking up with. You know, let the trap say amen. No, let the trap repent. The trap can say amen if they repent. You know, we want the trap. We want, but see, here's the thing. We want people to come out of the trap, or we want that trap to come out of them, because they are trapped. That's what the enemy does. He sets traps. He sets snares. That's what a snare is. It's a trap. And we're not to be snared by the devil and caught in his snares and caught in his traps. And that's why we need the Holy Spirit. That's why we need God. That's why we need Jesus Christ in our life. Be covered by that blood of Jesus. Be washed and sanctified, regenerated, made new. Hallelujah. But see, when you're yoking up with these worldly individuals, this is what happens, friends. This is what happens. When you have the spirit of divination over you and your record label and the genre that you're in, this is what happens. I mean, we proved it. It's clearly divination. It's clearly witchcraft. Look how everyone's getting that tattooed on. Not everyone, but a lot of his fans and followers. Idolatry. That's what it is. It's idolatry. You have to be in idolatry to get that tattooed on you. I was in idolatry. That's why I have just a sm slight smaller version of the cross that Tupac has on his back. Because I was in idolatry. And I had to repent of it. I had to repent of getting tattoos. I only have two, but I had to repent of those two. Because it's not of God. This is not our body. This is not ours. This is the temple that houses the Holy Spirit. Think about this. How could we, you know, think about the, the, the temple in, in Jerusalem, you know, back in Solomon's day. Now, that temple wouldn't have been very wicked if they would have desecrated that temple like with how today with like graffiti because you know that's one of the that's one of the tenets of hip-hop is is graffiti graffiti artists so so imagine if they would have put graffiti on the temple that would have been an abomination to the lord so how much more our body which is the temple of the holy spirit should we desecrate this? This isn't ours to mark up. He was marked and pierced for us. So why do we need to get marked and pierced? Something to think about. Again, though, the spirit of divination. I really pray in Jesus' name, Lecrae comes out of it. That's what I'm hoping and praying for. But I, I don't know if he's too deep already. So, Kappa Alpha Psi, spirit of divination. Apollo, the, the Delphic Shrine. You know, we see here, as I read in Acts 16, that when Paul casts that spirit out of her, that her masters, her handlers, they lost their income, or a good deal of income. And because of it, and because of the uproar that it caused, they were cast into prison. But look how Paul, look how Paul and Silas reacted. This is so amazing. They were praying and singing praises unto the Lord, unto the Lord. And by through them praying and singing praises unto the Lord, the Lord sent a mighty earthquake. And the shackles and the bonds that were on those prisoners came off. And salvation came to the jailer and his household. 
through that. Now, why am I saying this? Because that's the power of the music. The music is meant to break the shackles off when you're singing praises unto God. You're limiting that power by yoking up with these worldly individuals and using their worldly beats and making worldly music and being like, oh, I don't need to say God or Jesus in every song. Then what are you singing for? Sing praises unto Him. Give Him your whole heart. Again, we worship God in spirit and in truth. If it's the Holy Spirit, then it's truth. If it's the truth, it's got to be the Holy Spirit. And through that, through that, the bonds and the shackles will come off those that are in prison, that are in bondage. Music, there's that power in music. Music has that power to do that. Think about King David, when he played the harp and that evil spirit left out of, out of King Saul. That is the power behind music. Just like, just like I believe personally and from what I've heard from reports that that's what's happening with, with Brian Trejo right now of, of Kingdom Music while he's doing that 90 days in jail. That the that bonds are coming off of men who are in prison, who are who are in jail, and not just in prison physically, but spiritually and mentally and emotionally. And he's in there doing a mighty work of the Lord, singing praises unto God, giving him glory so the shackles can come off. Not glorifying yourself, not yoking up with the world. This is what Lecrae should do. He claims that this is, is how the path that God has him on. That God is having him build bridges, not barriers. Bro, you're building bridges to Babylon because you have that Babylonian spirit in you. And you need that spirit cast out of you. In Jesus' name.
down before the come up, I ain't stressing Baby, I'm too busy counting all these blessings Blessings Count it up, count it up, count it up Count it up, count it up, count it up Count it up, count it up, count it up Blessings Count it up, count it up, count it up Count it up, count it up, count it up Count it up, count it up, count it up Blessings Blessings perfect in the music i think of it almost as an artistic bridge between who i was and who i am the problem with bridges is that they often get walked on from both sides secular critics didn't understand it because it felt so christian and many of my core christian fans didn't understand it because it wasn't preachy they were used to me playing the pastor rapper role killer never directly mentioned god or jesus and neither did background so i lost some fans after the album released but I was confident I was moving in the direction God was calling. And I was also sure that this was only the beginning. The authenticity of rehab caught the attention of some mainstream influencers. And in 2011, I was invited to participate in the BET Cypher. This is an event in conjunction with the BET Hip Hop Awards where some of the best young artists gather to rap 16 bars and show off their talent. Those familiar with hip hop know this can make or break an artist. The Cypher took place in a warehouse in Brooklyn and I didn't have much time to prepare. 
on the flight up and the hours preceding it, I was sweating. What would I say to a mainstream audience who wasn't familiar with me or my music? This was a watershed moment, so I knew I couldn't just spit a few lyrical bars like everyone else. Sure, I wanted to have a good delivery, but I also wanted to show people that you can be good at your craft and true to your faith at the same time. Probably watching like, man, I never heard of him. I'll murder him. The nerve of him rocking with Premier. That's so absurd of him. Wait until he spit a couple verbs at them. If you really want to, hey, wait, he got the word with him. I hear him holler. Jesus, the notorious, no, the most glorious, homie. Some Christians who saw it weren't happy with me using a notorious B.I.G. reference to talk about Jesus. And for giving a nod to DJ Premier, who was produced for most of mainstream hip hop's elite artists. But I had just taken the same approach Apostle Paul did in Acts 17. Our situations weren't that different. Paul had been invited to speak in Areopagus, a place where all of the influential voices in his day gathered to trade ideas. In explaining what he believed, Paul used the language of the culture and referenced their popular poets. I used the language of hip hop, which I spoke fluently since I was a kid. And I referenced some of our most prominent poet rappers. When I flew home afterward, I felt at peace with my performance. We had moved to Atlanta, and I started forming friendships with lots of non-Christian people. I struggled at first. I hadn't engaged with many non-Christians since coming to faith, except to argue with them about how sinful they were. Figuring out how to be friends with people who didn't believe in Jesus without compromising my beliefs was a process. I slowly learned how to love non-Christians without pushing them away. These relationships opened me up artistically, and I began to feel it was time to take another step forward. I received a random phone call with two people instead of at people. The result was a mixtape we called Church Clothes. The lyrics were stripped of most of the Christianese that shackled my previous music, even rehab. Rather than try to preach at people, the songs dealt with real problems head on. In Cold World, I talked about the difficulties of living in a broken world of poverty and violence. One song, The Price of Life, dealt with rampant materialism. She camouflaged her insecurity in Jimmy Choo's. High hills, but the mountaintop she'll never choose. She'll settle for a dude in precious metals. A slave to his money buys change, you could tell it. Church Clothes was more than just an honest album. In some ways, the album was a definitive declaration of my new direction. I was proclaiming that the music I was committed to making was for all people. I was declaring that I was no longer striving to be Christianity's golden child or get a pat on the back from religious celebrities. I was going to have to have the conversations I felt God calling me to curate. I was going to tell the real and raw stories and let the chips fall where they may. In this way, Church Clothes was a manifesto of who I felt God had called me to be. A hip-hop artist who is a Christian but doesn't fit inside a box. I'd always been a truth teller, but now I was speaking in a way that made sense to people outside of the Christian faith too. The title track was even written from the perspective of a non-Christian. It talked about the hypocrisy and corrupt pastors and gay choir members who are stuck in the closet. The honesty resonated, and the mixtape blew up on that piss. It was downloaded more than 100,000 times in the first 48 hours. The traffic overloaded their servers and crashed the website. A quarter of a million people snatched it up by the end of the month. We were all shocked. But while the music was surging, some of my Christian fans were confused by the new direction. Looking back, I should have been more explicit with what God was leading me to do. My silence left my longtime fans in the dark about the evolution of the music. The dam of their frustration broke less than a year later when I released my next studio album, Gravity, which pushed even further. I even teamed up with mainstream rapper Big Crit on one of the tracks. Some thought I'd gone too far. Former fans wrote hateful things about me on blogs. They labeled me a sellout and a fake. Some attacked me personally, even questioning whether I was really a Christian. Some people contacted venues and tours to get me banned from performing. Crowds started showing up to protest my concerts. People were posting YouTube videos condemning me to hell, even suggesting I join the Illuminati. I was being criticized in public for the first time in my career, and I didn't know how to manage it. I was angry and hurt at first. I protested in prayer. If these are your people, God, I don't want to be like them. I even flipped out to my wife, screaming about how betrayed I felt. I was just trying to follow God's calling on my life, I told her. I was still unashamed of my faith. That hadn't changed, but now I was being bold with my art. Why were people attacking me? My wise wife encouraged me to get off social media and spend more time with God. I knew she was right. 
I grabbed a few books, my Bible, and locked myself in my closet. I read a biography of Francis Schaeffer, a Christian thinker who showed the world what it meant to live with a Christian worldview. Schaeffer knew what being criticized felt like, and it drove him to make sure he knew what he believed, too. Reading Schaeffer sent me back, once again, to the Gospels. I read about how Jesus' heart for the world incited the anger of the religious community, but it never stopped him from doing what he believed the Father was calling him to do, even if that meant laying his livelihood and his life on the altar. If religious people wanted to crucify me for trying to reach the non-religious, I concluded, I was in pretty good company. I emerged from my closet with a new confidence and peace. And a few days later, I had a conversation with Pastor Rick Warren that confirmed everything God had been saying. If you're going to call the shots, Lecrae, you're going to have to take them too, he told me. For every 1,000 people you influence, you'll have 100 critics. And many of them will call themselves Christian. That just comes with the territory. Once again, I committed to die to the acceptance of men, to refocus all my attention on God's glory and his calling on my life. I had learned to be unashamed in the midst of a fallen world. Now I needed to learn to be unashamed in the midst of a religious world. I started to realize that Christian bloggers and critics will find a reason to scrutinize almost anything. At my first mainstream hip-hop festival, Paid Dues Festival in Los Angeles, I performed after Macklemore. At another festival, I performed alongside Wu-Tang Clan. People went out of their way to express frustrations at me sharing the stage with these quote-unquote secular artists. Some critics were angry that a YouTube video showed me rocking my head to profane music. But my critics almost lost their minds when they became aware of my friendship with Kendrick Lamar. But the critics didn't know the whole story. Critics almost never do. Things aren't inherently evil or bad, but they have been tainted with sin. Because of Jesus, we don't need to see culture as something to be avoided. It is something to be engaged. You cannot stomp something you're running away from. You cannot influence something you never encountered. A good example of a biblical worldview is Daniel. I like that. If he were alive now, we'd probably hang out. In the Bible, Daniel was an advisor to a king named Nebuchadnezzar. Working for the king was a pretty good gig, but things got weird when the king had some crazy dreams. Nebuchadnezzar wanted to know what they meant, so he summoned his advisors. In those days, interpreting dreams was a pagan practice. If Daniel was wearing bifocals, he would have seen this as a secular action, an evil action, something that people who serve God didn't do. But Daniel didn't see the world like that. He knew that as the psalmist would later write, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. So Daniel goes to God and God tells him what the dreams meant. When Daniel interpreted King Nebuchadnezzar's dream, the king was impressed and appointed Daniel his chief advisor. Now, if Daniel were living in our world, he might have turned down the job and enrolled in seminary, but he didn't because he saw this secular job as part of his sacred calling. And because he didn't see the world as divided, he took the job and was able to speak godly wisdom into Nebuchadnezzar's life. This has changed the way I do music. There's no such thing as Christian rap and secular rap. Only people can become Christians. Music can't accept Jesus into its heart. So I'm not trying to make Christian music or secular music. I'm just making music. Hip hop, like all music, is a good thing. I could use it for evil by filling it with violence and misogyny and profanity or I can use it to glorify God. Every song I write doesn't have to have the gospel spelled out or quote scripture so people will know I love Jesus. My goal is to just use my gifts to produce great art that tells the truth about the world. If I see the world through a biblical lens, the music will naturally paint a picture that serves people and honors God. The same is true for you. If you're a politician, you don't have a secular job. If you're a computer programmer, you don't have a secular job. The term secular is defined as an attitude, activity, or thing that has no religious or spiritual basis. But there is nothing on the planet that God isn't ruling over. Everything a believer touches and uses in a way that honors God is, in a sense, no longer secular. We all bring our sacred callings into a world that God created and called good and that has been tainted by sin, but where God wants to use us to impact for his glory. What is true for a job is true for everything in the world that God has called good. Dancing is good. Movies are good. Music is good. The hearts of men, however, have been tainted by sin. So the way we use these good things can be bad. 
Some Christians have talked about sex like it's inherently bad. You can use it for evil by becoming a prostitute, or you can use it for good by enjoying the gift of sex in the context of marriage. If I stab you with a knife, that's evil. But I can also use that knife to carve a Thanksgiving turkey for a family in need. Rather than thinking about the world in categories of simply good and evil, a biblical worldview helps us think in categories of good and redeemable. You and I may come from different backgrounds and live in different cities and have different jobs and be separated in age by decades, but we have the same calling to be instruments of God's redemptive power in the world. The Apostle Paul wrote, we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. The word for workmanship is poema. We are God's poem to the world. A poem articulates the heart, the mind, and the character of the poet. Your calling may not be to write music or produce music or sing music, but that's okay. You are music. You're God's music. And God doesn't just want to break records and top charts with you. He wants to change lives and industries and society. By God's grace, I'm going to keep making the music as long as I have air in my lungs. But my prayer is that you'll make music too. Maybe not with your voice, maybe not on the stage, but hopefully with your life. And may God get the glory from the music we create. Keep on creating. Okay, so we see Lecrae and his wife making the super excellent Master Mason symbol. And this comes from the York Rite of Freemasonry. And we also see here, and I just included this in, Stephen Furtick and Joyce Meyer, Carl Lentz, Louis Giglio, John Gray... And many more from his church and ministry making this same symbol. And then we also see here a picture of Aleister Crowley making the same symbol. So my question is, why is Lecrae, why is Lecrae and his wife, why are they making this symbol? Now I know they can try to claim oh it means wakanda wakanda forever well wakanda is not real but we know masonry is and i believe we're seeing enough signs and symbols to put all the pieces together the x over the chest or the crossed arm symbol can also be a symbol for the antichrist the x is a representation of the mark of the beast as well. Think about 666 or XXX. And you think about XXX porn or triple X porn. So we know that this symbol is also tied to the Antichrist, which again is the ruler of the one world religion, one world government, one world currency, one world everything. Here we have Lecrae and the vow of silence. And in the description he says, even fools look wise if they keep silent, which is actually a proverb from the Holy Scriptures. But since he's so ashamed, he puts Jewish proverb. This is <clears throat> three sixes in the eye. So you can see that arrangement of three sixes in the eye of Lucifer. So you understand 666 means Satan or Lucifer. The eye, distinguishing that eye, means Horus or Lucifer. And then here we have this sign of silence being used. And that sign of silence, you're going to find out right now. We'll go into that sign rather than the 666 sign. This is Osiris in the middle, Isis, and Horus. And you can see Horus, Horus puts the uh, finger to the lips. Horus has a counterpart in Greece, which is Harpocrates. And you can see the uh, uh, finger going to the lip in that case. You can also see uh, similarities between the adornment of these gods as well. Harpocrates or Horus 
Note the serpent and other symbols and figures around him. Notice also the finger to his mouth and the harp-shaped object on his head. The comedian Harpo Marx imitated this deity, and there is Harpo Marx. And he's doing the sign of Horus, or Lucifer, or Harpocrates. That's why he's named Harpo. But it just so happens that Oprah Winfrey uh, has her studios called Harpa, Harpo. There's dual symbolism here. Harpo refers to Harpocrates, I believe, and therefore Lucifer. Oprah is Harpo backwards, so you have now this dual symbology. They love to do things front and backwards. Um, backward masking and Satanism is key. So it was very well thought about uh, of Harpo Studios. So you can see here, silence, the sign of silence. Here's a two-finger method, uh, and I'll show you how they do it with variants of that. Uh, I believe this is African. I'm not sure there, but here we have Horus. Egyptian god, oh, this is Osiris doing that sign. So we have different gods doing the same sign, uh, but it all references that uh, a satanic trinity and these gods that have multiple uh, uh, disguises or, or manifestations. Uh, in Freemasonry, you have now uh, the signs of silence. So now you have a reference to secret societies keeping silent about things, so that dual symbolism of keeping silent and the signs of Horus and Lucifer. Uh, Journal of, of the Masonic Society, now you can see the sign being done. Here is Harpocrates as a sculpture, sign of silence. You have a Masonic Lodge in Oklahoma City. Now this is key as well, because you see now the Aeon, and the Aeon... Uh, the Aeon of Horus, or the Age of Horus. And you see Horus in the background, the hawk uh, shape, and now you see this sign of silence. Finger to the mouth. Alistair Crowley and Secret Societies. And you can see that that is the use of the sign of silence or the sign of Horus. You can also see the pyramid with eye at the top. This is Wicca, witchcraft, and you understand that by the uh, crescent moon and the sun or the star there. Here is that sign of silence again. Down pointing uh, usually means the female aspect uh, or earth. So you'll see some of that later. You can see this priest. Alumbrados. Illuminati and these monks and brothers. Now we have a reference to monks and brotherhoods, Jesuits and Jesuitism going all the way back through the Roman Empire. And so I'm going to hold that there, but this is Ignatius Loyola who is the founder of the Jesuits. And you're going to understand what Jesuitism is going from Jesuitism, Roman Empire to Jesuitism to uh, with Gnosticism and then through onto Freemasonry, founded by Jesuits. And we have uh, Benedictus, and you see the sign of silence being used. Here is a Rosicrucian, so you can understand all of these secret societies, all of this stuff goes back, um, and Rosicrucianism is none, uh, a, another secret society, and its roots in Gnosticism and monks and Jesuitism. Ra R.C. Rosicrucian, and then you see the rosy cross being used. That's not a symbol of Christianity. window. Moving along, here is Horus, uh, this god, and then you see all of this sacred geometry, all of these patriarchs of science and uh, diplomacy and, and uh, stature, and then you have now going, coming on through the, looks like prelates and the Roman Empire, on through uh, distinguished people like John Dee, who was the uh, in the court of uh, Queen Elizabeth, and all of these dignitaries coming through, all of these elite coming through. What an image! And to show you that the sign of Horus now is being depicted on Mercury, the god Mercury. And there he is. There's Mercury again. It looks like now this is uh, the sort of Jewish seven candelabra 
uh, oh, I forget what that's called now, just slipped my mind, but uh, just to show you that there is a counterfeit going on, and they use the symbols of these things to twist your brain into thinking that it's all part of the same thing. And so I want you to understand that there's counterfeit going on, and please understand uh, uh, that concept fully as we move along. Over here we have a portrait. This is supposed to be Jesus. And you see the man here doing this sign of silence. Very interesting symbology going on. Even the fingers have that symbology. We'll see a little bit of that later. And you see this woman in the background with a finger to the mouth. Horus, again, the baby Horus. This is called silence, the sculpture. And you see the hawks on both sides and the finger to the mouth. This portrait with the child and the finger to the mouth, the Masonic checkerboard floor, and you see a lot of this going on here. Very interesting. Colin Powell, Jewish magic and Kabbalism, uh, gives a due guard of the Royal Arch Mason. All these guys at the top level. He is a Mormon, and you're going to find out that Mormonism was founded by Freemasons. Winston Churchill, former uh, Prime Minister of Great Britain, a Mason and a Druid priest, gives the sign of silence. Now, this is a key image here. You can understand now the use of the symbolism, dual use. She closes one eye to show you the eye of Lucifer, and then she does the same thing that Lady Gaga does in on her album cover uh, with the sign of Horus, and, uh, which is Lucifer. So that is a fashion shoot, and that's a studio image. And you can see the same thing going on. Basically, they're covering the eye instead of the OK sign in the eye, the 666 six, six, six sign. Now, moving along with everyone doing the same thing, here is Rihanna. She actually tattooed shh on her uh, finger. Lindsay Lohan did the same thing, as well, uh, well as Lily Donaldson, doing the same thing, promoting the same thing. And now you can see them all doing it. This is amazing to me. And we don't get it because this is a sign that they've made ubiquitous. Oh, shh, be quiet. That kind of thing. When you see it like this and that she's closed her mouth with duct tape and that she's giving the sign of the devil, then you can understand that's a dual symbolism there. This is that lady sovereign uh, from the United Kingdom. Now, again, here is the studio shot of a young Michael Jackson. He does everything as well as this sign. So you understand that that is a deliberate sign of Horus, a.k.a. Lucifer. You saw that two-finger uh, symbolism up, uh, previously on this plate. And you can see Selena, Fergie, they all are doing it. Okay, now for the next series of pictures, we're looking at Lecrae constantly throwing up the triangle. And as we've seen earlier, he mocked about doing it. You know, basically was very condescending. But he knows what he's doing. And he knows he constantly throws up this hand sign. And we see other elite people like Angela Merkel, you know, Jay-Z, uh, Donald Trump, other politicians, other foreign leaders... We see other entertainers, so-called pastors, and news anchors, and many other people throw up this sign. And most people who typically throw up the sign are Freemasons. It's not a normal hand sign to throw up. You know, it's not like someone's just going to stand there and just naturally put their hand in the size of a sign of a pyramid or a diamond or anything like that. They are forcibly making themselves make that sign. And typically when they're doing that sign in a controlled setting, it's because they're letting it be known who they're with and who they serve. And once again, we see Lecrae. Many of these pictures are in controlled settings. And he's putting his hand in that shape. And I could go on and on and on about the rest of the symbols that 
are affiliated with Lecrae. Like we mentioned a little bit earlier, the Rosicrucian. We had all the roses and the cross in the background. If you go to the whole Together Festival that Lecrae was a part of in 2016 and once again in 2018, they used the Ouroboros logo. I did a video on that before. There's other videos online about the Ouroboros. I'm not going to get too much more into detail about all these signs. Uh, we got Lecrae doing the vow of silence that I just showed. We have Lecrae throwing up the 666 hand sign, which is also, they say, the diamond for the Kappa Alpha Psi fraternity. But again, everything is done in these secret societies exoterically and esoterically so it's always a double meaning you know just like uh with music music that is influenced and controlled by satan always has double meanings you can hear meanings being played forward and then you can also hear meanings being played backwards like we've seen with the back masking with the lecrae ty dollar sign song for instance I don't think all of these things that we're presenting today are just mere coincidences. I don't think it's a coincidence that they keep throwing up the X sign and some can say, oh, well, that means for Wakanda. Well, again, we have to understand there's an exoteric and there's an esoteric. And these people who take these vows of silence that are a part of these different fraternities and secret societies, they always do all these different hand gestures and hand signs, and they'll try to play it off and act like they're not doing it for any satanic reason. But we know ultimately that's just not the case. Again, why do we see Lecrae wearing all these lightning bolts? We know that the lightning bolt is a representation of Satan. It's a representation of Lucifer when he fell from heaven. And as a matter of fact, since we're making the ultimate connection here, who the God is that Lecrae unfortunately is serving, we're just going to bring this thing full circle and get to wrapping this up today, brethren. All right, so it's in Isaiah 14. And it goes on and says, Thy pomp is brought down to the grave, and the noise of thy vials. The worm is spread under thee, and the worms cover thee. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Notice when we started reading in verse 11 of Isaiah 14, it said, Thy pomp is brought down to the grave and the noise of thy vials. Because Lucifer, as the angel in heaven, he was built with instruments basically built into him. And I might include a picture of this, but there was a concert Justin Bieber had a few years ago where he had he was coming down from you could say like illustrating like he was coming down from the sky and he had wings and then in his wings he had instruments he was representing lucifer now just another side note sidebar i know they say or claim justin bieber is a christian and i really hope and pray justin bieber does get born again you know being that he was i don't believe he is anymore sitting under carl lentz and hill's song you know, it's it's hard to imagine that he was truly given the proper gospel. I remember a couple years ago when Brother Adam and I were preaching outside of the Justin Bieber concert. The first night Bieber was in town, Brother Adam had actually witnessed Lecrae go into the Justin Bieber concert. And Adam's like, hey, I know who you are. And he just kind of like, you know, threw up a deuce or whatever 
to Adam and just went about his business, you know, and Adam was telling him, hey, you know, he's basically wrong for going in there and he's, you know, wrong for doing what he's doing. And then if you look recently, and I'll include a picture of it on Lecrae's Instagram, again, he's repping Justin Bieber. Now, again, I hope and pray Justin Bieber gets saved, but, you know, we have Justin Bieber, you know, being displayed as or portrayed as lucifer we got lecrae sitting here talking about the light bear lucifer initiative you know again seeing all these connections that me that you could say basically implement him into being a freemason you know he is a, an open cap of alpha psi and so it's not a stretch of the imagination being the fact that he is a cap of alpha psi to question if he would then go into even higher fraternal organizations such as the freemasons you know the rosicrucians the knights templars you know uh jesuits and so on and so forth i don't think it's a stretch of the imagination at all because we got to remember once again friends we don't wrestle against flesh and blood but against principalities against the uh, powers, you know, against spiritual wickedness in high places, you know, and the rulers of darkness of this world, so on and so forth, you know. So we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, man. Our our warfare is not carnal. Our warfare is against the unseen forces that are trying to take our souls to hell. And once again, all of this is like full circle. All the different affiliations that Lecrae is having, you know, yoking up with all these different worldly rappers, all these different worldly individuals, all these different worldly musicians. I mean, you got Lecrae making songs with Ty Dolla Sign. His songs are filth. I mean, again, he makes songs talking about, you know, having sex, fornicating with other men's women, and he don't care about being the side guy. You know, he just wants to get in where he fits in, you know, all songs about drugs, you know, making, having Zaytoven produce his beats, you know, Zaytoven once again, has made music for so many worldly individuals. And here's the problem, once again, just as we've seen G. Craig Lewis talking about. The beats, the beats, man. The music. It's not always just about the lyrics. It's about the music as well. And once again, as I stated earlier, you can hear different frequencies and different tones with these newer headphones that they've come out with. You know, I always hear... I believe Gary Price say, you know, the beast is in the beats. And you think about that. I mean, the beast is in the beats. And you see the, the Dre, his uh, Beats headphones or whatever. I don't know if he sold it or not. But anyways, Beats by Dre, they called it. Um, their B logo kind of looks like a six. And in that one image I showed with the girl, you know, who was at the Lecrae show or at the Lecrae Metal Earth Trap say M Amen premiere or whatever, we seen that it was also sponsored by Beats by Dre and had the 666 six, six in the background. I mean, it's just too many coincidences for me. Too many coincidences for me to sit here and say that this guy is not a deceiver. That this guy is not deceiving people. I mean, you can go on any Lecrae video, any Lecrae Instagram or Twitter or Facebook post, and if somebody even has anything critical to say, all the fanboys, all the idolaters come out of the woodworks, and they're quick to label somebody as a Pharisee, as a legalist, you know, self-righteous. They're quick to say, only God can judge me. Only God can judge him. You know, and it's funny because Lecrae's favorite rapper is Tupac. And Tupac had a song called Only God Can Judge Me. And now Lecrae has a song called Only God Can Judge Me.
cross me Only God could judge me You know, and, and that's the thing. That's the problem these guys don't understand. They'll sit there and say, oh, you know, thou shalt not judge, which there is no 11 commandments. Or they'll say, you know, judge not lest you be judged. You know, they're paraphrasing Matthew 7, 1, but they're not reading in its context, where in its context it's talking about hypocritical judgment. If we aren't hypocrites... The Bible tells us that we can judge, and it says the spiritual person judges all things. In 1 Corinthians 2.15, it says the saints will judge the world. It tells us that we're to judge righteously. It says that ye shall know them by their fruits. How do you know them by, your, by their fruits? You make a judgment. The Word of God says that that we are to try the spirits to see whether they are of God or not. Trying the spirits is judging. It's making righteous judgment. It's called discernment, one of the gifts of the spirit. We are called to judge. We need to judge. It's because people aren't judging. That's why everything is going to hell in a handbasket. And that's why the scripture says that judgment must begin at the house of the Lord first. That's where judgment is going to begin. So we need to judge, friends. We need to judge righteously. You know, I shouldn't have had to put together an over three-hour documentary proving that Lecrae is a deceiver. He is deceived, but he is also a deceiver. There's no way around it. You know, listening to his book like I did, and even the, some of the clips that I put in here, how he's trying to basically make it seem like that you can redeem that you can redeem you know worldly music i mean so what can we redeem porn you know can we redeem tattoos because once again you said early off oh you're no you're not getting no tattoos now you're getting all tatted up so i want to know what what would possess a person specifically someone who claims to be born again to want to get tattoos all over the body because it doesn't feel good I've had two in my life that I had to repent of, and getting tattoos does not feel good. So I don't know why a born-again or a professing born-again Christian would want that. We even have Joyce Meyer, you know, promoting getting tattoos. And if you speak against it, you're a legalist and you're a self-righteous Pharisee. Holiness is not legalism. Whatever people used to think holiness was, it just became a mess and a nightmare. And really turned a lot of people off. Because holiness became not smoking, not drinking, not cussing, not dancing, not playing cards, not going to parties, not wearing pretty clothes, not wearing any, any makeup, <clears throat> no jewelry, not having a nice hairstyle. You, 
you had to cut or not cut your hair depending on which brand of religion you followed and God forbid that you have a tattoo or if you're a man put an earring in your ear I mean that will just put the religious people over the edge come on I've been there done that well look at look at those tattoos well you, you see that man wearing that earring Wow. <laughs> now, you know, I really don't have time to do this justice, but <laughs> in Isaiah 44, 5, it says, One will say, I am the Lord's, and another one will call himself by the name of Jacob, and another will write or even brand or tattoo upon his hand, I belong to the Lord. Well, now there are some scriptures in there somewhere that tell you not to do that. Yeah, and this is where it's at. Leviticus 20, 28, misquoted, which says, you shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print or tattoo any marks on you for the dead. <laughs> you know, we just pick stuff out of here and leave out what we want to. And, the Bible says in Isaiah 49 that God has a picture of you tattooed on the palm of his hand. I'm right on the verge of going and getting the tattoo. Right back here, I belong to the Lord. You'll go with me, won't you? I thought I might as well just push all the religious people just right off the cliff and get it over with. See? Again, no judgment. No judgment. And these people who are being propped up, like the Lecrae's and Hill songs, like the Joyce Myers and the, the Creflo Dollars, T.D. Jakes, Tyler Perry's, you know, so on and so forth. These types of people that are being propped up in the world, it's all about no judging. You can't judge anything. But they can sure judge you, can't they? They can sure judge you. So when Lecrae says, only God can judge me, that should scare you, bro. That should really, really scare you because then that means you're not born again. If only God can judge you, that means you're a lost, wicked heathen on your way to hell. And you'll be judged by the Lord at the great white throne judgment. That should scare you. So he should probably repent of that song. Now I know Vigilant Christian Mario said that Lecrae made that song about him. I think that's a little conceited and a little high-minded of him to say that or think that. But nonetheless, I digress. So one of the last points I wanted to make in regards to all this, if I happen to forget anything or had forgotten anything, I don't know. But once again, the 116, it's, it's 116. When they have it written out, when they have it tatted on them, it doesn't say 116. It says 11 and then 6 spelled out. So... You know, I was praying and, and just meditating over this word, and the Holy Spirit just, just prompted me to go to Genesis 11, because once again, this is all about building bridges to Babylon. You know, Lecrae is all about building bridges, not barriers. But we are to build barriers. We are to have the watchmen sit on the wall, and a wall is a barrier. The watchman sits on the wall, and when he sees the trouble, when he sees the deception, he blows that trumpet and lets the people be known what is coming. But actually, before I read that, I just wanted to read Ezekiel 28 right quick. Okay, so Ezekiel 28, and we're going to start at verse 11 
Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Now I'm going to stop right there right quick, because many antinomians and lukewarmers will say, Well, this isn't talking about Lucifer. This is talking about the king of Tyrus. Well, Lucifer... Well, the king of Tyrus that it's talking about here is actually a representation. It actually is talking about Lucifer. But see, they only like to look at the surface level of things and not actually study it out. And then this is their way of basically trying to justify that Lucifer is not talked about in the Bible. Because, you know, most of these unfortunately use lukewarm, false perversions. So anyways... Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God, and precious stone was thy covering, the sardis, topaz, and the diamond, the barrel, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold, and the workmanship of thy tabrets, which is an instrument, and of thy pipes, which is an instrument, was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. So, it says when he was created, he had instruments built in him, just like I was talking about with that representation that Justin Bieber was doing. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so, that thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked upon and down, or I'm sorry, thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created, till iniquity was found in thee. Mm. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings, that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled the sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. It shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. All they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shalt be a terror, and never shalt thou be any more. Amen. So... Obviously, when you read that in its full context, we can see that it's not actually talking about the literal king of Tyrus because it says, Thou was the anointed cherub that covered. So, was Tyrus a cherub? Was Tyrus an angel? No. But Lucifer was, and he got cast down to the ground. So, I mean, I don't know why this is so difficult for people to understand, but it's like they're trying to deflect what the Bible says. They act like the Bible just doesn't really apply anymore today. Jesus said in Luke 10 and 18, And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. So, going back to Genesis 11 though, when I, like I said, when I was praying and meditating over this word, the Holy Spirit gave me Genesis 11. You know, I was just looking at the 116 on the computer screen, just looking at it, and I just hear the Lord tell me, go to Genesis 11. And I go to Genesis 11, and I remember it's Babel, Sour Babel. Go to verse 6. So I go to Genesis 11, 6. I go to Genesis 116, and it says, and the Lord said, well, actually, let me back up. I'm going to go to verse 5 first. We'll, we'll, read, in it. Well, we'll read verse 6 first. 
And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and this they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. That is Genesis 11, 6, 1, 1, 6. It's talking about Babel. It's talking about Babylon. It's talking about how they were one, one world religion, one world, you know, tongue, one world governing system, one world currency, etc. It was a one world system in place in Babylon, and God had to come down and destroy it. He came down and confounded their languages. Again, we know 11 equals confusion. And we see with Lecrae, and what he is doing is causing a lot of confusion. Because people don't know, man, which side of the fence are you on? What, which side of the game are you playing? But I think it's really obvious. I think it's really obvious. So let me just read back up. In Genesis 11, read it in its context. Verse 11, I'm sorry, uh, Genesis 11, verse 1. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime had they for mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven and let us make us a name lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth and the lord came down to see the city of the tower which the children of men builded and the lord said behold the people is one and they have all one language and this they begin to do and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do go to let us go down and there confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. Amen. So, in, realist, in, in reality, I believe that the 116 actually stands for Babylon. It actually stands for Babel and about amalgamating everything as t into one. That's why Lecrae says he's all about building bridges, not barriers. You know, when you bridge a gap, you're yoking things together. And once again, the scripture says to be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. So that we know this. I guess the last order of business is go to Revelation 18. This is talking about Babylon. And this is the destruction of Babylon. This is what's going to happen. So, we'll just read 17 and 18. Revelation 17, and there came one of the angel, one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will shew unto thee judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kingdom, or with who the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, and abominations of the earth and I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus and I saw her 
I wondered with great admiration. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman, and of the beast that carrieth her, which hath the seven heads and ten horns. The beast that thou sawest was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. When they behold the beast that was, and is not, and yet is, and here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. And there are seven kings, five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. And the beast that was, and is not, and even he is the eighth, and is of the seventh, and goeth in perdition. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet, but received power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the lamb and the lamb shall overcome them for he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. And he saith unto me, the waters which thou sawest where the, ho where the horse sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues and the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast these shall hate the whore and shall make her desolate and naked and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire for God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God shall be fulfilled and the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. And we go to Revelation 18 now. Get a drink of water. This is going to be the ultimate destruction of Babylon right here. And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven having great power and the earth was lightened with his glory and he cried mightily with a strong voice saying Babylon the great is fallen is fallen and has become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird for all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her and the merchants of the earth are wax rich through the abundance of her delicacies and I heard another voice from heaven saying come out of her my people that ye be not partakers of her sins and that ye receive not of her plagues for her sins have reached unto heaven and God hath remembered her iniquities reward her even as she rewarded you and double unto her double according to her works and the cup which she hath filled fill to her double how much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning standing afar off for the fear of her torment saying alas alas that great city Babylon that mighty city for in one hour is thy judgment come and the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her for no man buyeth their merchandise any more the merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and of pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all fine wood and all manner of vessels of ivory and all manner of vessels of precious wood and of brass and iron and marble and cinnamon and odors and ointments and frankincense and wine and oil and fine flour and wheat and beasts and sheep and horses and chariots and slaves and souls of men. Notice it said souls of men. Well, I thought I thought somebody couldn't sell their soul. I thought somebody couldn't sell their soul. Well, apparently they can. And the fruits that thy soul lusted after are departed from thee, 
and all things which were dainty and goodly and are departed from thee, and thou shalt find them no more at all. The merchants of these things which were made rich by her shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing, and saying, Alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. For in one hour so great riches has come to naught, and every shipmaster and all the company and ships and sailors, and as many as trade by sea stood afar off, and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? And they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness. For one hour she made desolate. Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you on her. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall the great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. Now pay attention, verse 22. And the voice of harpers and musicians and of pipers and trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee. And no craftsman of whatsoever craft he be shall be found any more in thee. And the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee. And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth. For by, the, by thy sorceries were all nations deceived, and in her was found the blood of prophets, and of saints, and of all that were slain upon the earth. Hallelujah. That is the destruction of Babylon, that great horde. The Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord is going to stop all of it. All of the, all of the commerce, all of the trading, all of the music. You look... Everywhere you go, everywhere you go, it's music, music, music. In your car, it's music. In the store, it's music. Gas station, while you're pumping gas, it's music. You can't escape music. Music is incorporated into everything because music is used to worship. Either you're using music to worship God or you're using music to worship another God. Lucifer was the angel of music, the anointed cherub that covereth. So when you call your initiative the light bearer initiative, it's the Lucifer initiative. You're a Freemason, bro. We have to be real with what's going on here, man. These are the last days and we don't have time to play anymore. We do not have time to play. We have to get right with the Lord. There's no more time. No more time for messing around, playing games. There's no more time for acting like a goofball, like Supreme Patty, or Whoa Vicky, or uh, Takashi69, or Little Pump, or this person, or that person, or a Cardi B, or a, a Danielle Bergoli Bad Baby. We, there's no time for all of that. There's no time to act like an idiot. We need to get right before the Lord. Look at What Up RG. Same thing. This guy with, with, with uh, Reach Records, the Cray in them. Andy Minio. They act like straight jokers, straight clowns. We need to get serious, man. We need to get souls saved, and we need to go home. And quit trying to make this your home, because this is what's going to happen. I just read to you that what's going to happen. While you're busy trying to build bridges to Babylon, the Lord is going to destroy Babylon. He's going to destroy it. So quit trying to yoke up with it. This is what we need to preach. This is what we need to talk about. We need to talk about that the time is running out. You have the platform. You have the platform. 
to share the truth. Who cares about making friends with the world? You said, oh, oh, me and Kendrick Lamar were chopping it up over spiritual stuff. Kendrick Lamar is a Hebrew Israelite now. What good did that do, bro? What good did that do, you kicking it with him? He obviously wasn't convicted. He obviously didn't have the, the, the fear of the Lord on him. No, no, he's, oh, I'm a Hebrew Israelite. That don't save nobody. He's a Hebrew Israelite and cussing like a sailor. Just like all the so-called Hebrew Israelites do that we meet in the streets. Ain't nothing changed, bro. You talking about working with Dre? Why? So you can put more hypnotic beats out in people's ears? Come on, man. Quit playing with me. Making trap music. Let the trap say, man, no. Let the trap repent, bro. Let the trap say, Lord, I repent, man. I'm going to stop selling drugs. I'm going to quit kicking it, and I'm going to get my word and spend time with you. That's what we need to do. You know, I say, oh, man. You know, trying to act like, oh, man, well, fitting in this box, Christianity fit in this box. Man, look. You want to find out the box to fit in? Read the word. Study the word, man. In context. Study it spiritually. Quit trying to act like certain things no longer apply. The Levitical law doesn't apply, but guess what? The moral law still applies. Guess what? Inking your body up, that still applies. They weren't to do it. Why? Because it was a pagan practice. Well, it didn't get redeemed and turned into no longer a pagan practice. It's still a pagan practice. So why are you doing it? And another thing, his song with Tori Kelly, who she apparently is putting on a show at a Masonic temple coming up here, I, I heard from Mario. That her, their song, I'll Find You, it's, it's a song for St. Jude's and the proceeds or whatever from the song is supposed to go to St. Jude's. All he's doing is doing his charitable deeds in front of men. That's all he's doing is doing charitable deeds in front of men because his his fraternity Kappa Alpha Psi that is the direct for or the direct charity they work with is St. Jude's. So I mean, act like he's some oh look what he's doing, look what he's doing. Man, he's just doing he's doing his alms before men. Scripture tells us not to do our alms before men in Matthew 6. You know, and going back to the whole Freemason stuff. The word of God tells us to not take any oaths. We're not to we're not to swear. We're not to take any kind of secret oaths, anything like that. So why are you taking secret oaths? The word of God says to call no man master. Call no man master. Only master is Christ. That's it. But oh, you're a master mason, you know, uh, a worshipable master, uh, so on and so forth. Look, man, time's running out. We got to get right. I don't know what else to say here. I think we've we've done a overwhelming job shedding light on this whole situation, on, on this whole, you know, Lecrae building bridges to Babylon, and those bridges will be destroyed. But... My hope and goal is is maybe that Lecrae will see this. Maybe Lecrae will repent. Maybe Lecrae will get born again. And maybe Lecrae will stop yoking himself up with the world. That he will learn what separation and sanctification truly is. Because, you know, people like to use, oh, well, Jesus ate with the sinners and the tax collectors, this, that, and the other, and the prostitutes. Yeah, he sat with them to bring them salvation. He didn't sit with them to kick it with them. He didn't sit with them to make music with them. I mean, there's a big difference, friends. We need to stop looking looking at music like it's a job. Music is not a job. There's no career in music. Music is meant to worship God. And if you're not using music to worship God, what are you worshiping? 
I ask that, friends. I lay that at your feet. So, Lord, Father God, we just want to thank you right now in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus that this video, this documentary, that it touches those that it needs to touch. That hearts are open, Father God, to receive the message. It's not perfect, Lord, but in Christ Jesus, Lord, somebody will receive this. And somebody will have their eyes and their hearts open, Lord. I just pray, Father God, in Jesus' name, that you make it possible, Lord, that this gets in the hands of the right people. Lord, I pray somehow this gets in the hands of Lecrae and that it convicts him, Lord, that I'm not coming out here to hate him. I'm coming out here making this wasting, I don't want to call it wasting my time, but spending a lot of time and effort doing this for the sake of seeing him come to the true saving knowledge of the Lord. Hallelujah. That's my hopes and prayers. And that way, true, genuine conversions can be made because right now, when it comes to him and it comes to 116 Reach Records, there's a lot of idolatry with the fans. And these men can do no wrong in their eyes. They can blatantly, openly worship the devil and they'll tell us that we're wrong, that we're lying. So, Lord, please, please open the eyes of those that need to be open, Lord. Maybe Lecrae is judgment. I don't know. I don't know at this point, Lord. Only you know, Father God. Lord, I just pray in Jesus' mighty name, Lord, that this opens somebody's eyes and this touches somebody's heart. And that none of this was for naught. That somebody is reached from this. Lord, Father God, we love you. We thank you. And we give you all praise and glory in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.